All right, guys, we're live. I'm going to go ahead and start today. My guest will be with us shortly. He's having some having some audio issues we're trying to get worked out here. So he'll be in in a, in a minute or so. So who we're going to have on today is a, a man named CDN Freight Broker. Uh, just started a channel. Everybody subscribe. He's one of the good guys here. He uh, He's a real-life freight broker, moves a lot of freight. And he also is uh, enjoys helping people, so he he really has a good grasp on the on the technologies and procedures uh, and, and things to to really help you. Um, so he's going to come on. Oh, he's he's restarting his laptop here, so he'll be in in just a little bit. But uh, he has, uh, you know, we've seen him on a lot of different channels, so we're gonna we're gonna bring him on today and, and talk to him. It's it's about time he and I get together. So really looking forward to that. So um, I hope everybody came here to, to, to put their learning hat on today from, from Robert, because he's got a lot of, a lot to teach. And today isn't really the day for, oh, brokers suck. I hate brokers. Um, save that for the, for the people that deserve it. This, this is one of the good guys. He was kind enough to take a, some time out of his weekend to, uh, to come in here and teach. So let's let's be the good uh, host and, and audience that the that the man deserves. Um, so a lot of us, you know, have taken it upon ourselves. You know, we're truck drivers. We've started our own authority, and uh, you know, we we have what it takes to make it work in that going up and down the road. But how much, you know, how much we really got to look at ourselves and say, how much have we really done on the business end to learn everything we to we need to know to to operate at a at a high functioning level, you know, at a high professional level. And um, it, it, in a time like this, it makes all the difference because you need a, you need competitive advantages right now. And uh, this guy has got a, a lot of stuff for us. So he's uh, he's restarting all his equipment here and we'll be in soon. So let's just see uh, while we're waiting here. Let's just see who's, uh, who's joining us today. Killian's Trucking, David Edwards. Well, Jackknife TV, this is uh, some good old education coming today. We, we hope so. I think we will. Um, with both feet, says, uh, hi, everybody. Thank you, DIY and CDN, for your time. Hoping my portable speaker range will allow me to listen as I'm working on my truck. Okay, we'll bring that uh, bring that equipment a little closer. Uh, El Guapo, this should be interesting, he says. Okay. Um Hit that like button. Subscribe to DIY Semi and CDN Freight Broker. Yeah, I have his a uh, CDN Freight Broker here scrolling at the bottom of the scene, at the bottom of the screen. It's a uh, at CDN Freight Broker three seven zero eight. That should take you right to his channel. Okay, we're gonna try this again. He's backstage here. Oh, now we got no. There we go. We got video. Do we have audio? I think so. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Well, I was just telling I the folks. My no problem here. Yeah, I was just telling I mean, you, rookie error. My complete apologies. That's all right. Just telling the folks all about you here, and uh, you got a channel. We got that scrolling at the bottom of the screen, and I see you all the time on everybody else's channel. So it's, it's time to, to have you for my very own, and I appreciate you taking time out of your weekend to come here and, and kind of help the folks here. What, what I'm hoping to do today is, uh, you know, you have a lot of you, you have a great grasp on technology and, and procedures and all the things it takes to. To have a competitive advantage in this in this kind of market, any kind of market, but it's even more so important right now in this kind of market. And the people came here to learn today um, how to how to get competitive advantage, how to do these things, and what they need to do to set themselves apart from everybody else. So go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit, and uh, you know promote your channel a little bit too. Well, yeah, the. Uh... <laughs> Hopefully the boring factor, the boring meter doesn't skyrocket uh, over the top here because I, <laughs> unfortunately, that's kind of my factor is it's, um, you know, being a broker and you see that when you, if you search the internet and you look up trucking, you'll obviously uh, see a lot of truckers sharing their journeys from different perspectives, right? Different modes, uh, whether it's them just showing their daily routines and others are talking about things as well. There's a whole gamut of truckers, but when you break down the freight brokers, you start searching freight brokers, you'll find a lot of freight broker trainers, but you often don't see a lot of freight brokers sharing their journeys. Right. And part of that is it's difficult because you're, you are that middle person and you do have contracts 
and there's things that you can say and there's things you can't say and they're very protective of their customers and their business and so it's hard to uh, reveal a lot in in the world of logistics in that capacity and that's where it is so that's kind of my intent is really just i'm giving it from my perspective as an agent i mean i can share with people the brokerage operation things required to actually run a brokerage but can i say that i'm actually running a brokerage and i'm telling you firsthand what i'm doing absolutely not i can share with you what's ha what i see behind the scenes from my brokerage and from the time i started with them to where i am now and i started with them in 2008 um so i could share that journey of seeing how they've grown from when i started to where we are today and what has changed and mainly as an agent, that's what I want to share and, and how I started. I mean, I did, I wasn't in, uh, I was never a commercial driver, uh, but my dad was, I, you know, my, my dad was a class one driver. He drove all of his life and uh, maintained his class one for many, many years. He did a variety of things. Uh, his last journey was more local stuff, more, it wasn't even CDL sort of, well, sort of CDL related, but he did things. He had friends that were truck dealers, went back when Ford was a seller and he got hired to go pick up the new trucks. And so he would, they'd fly them or he'd have to rent a car and drive to a city or fly to a city and then pick up and bobtail brand new trucks back that they, they ordered from the different factories or they were getting work done to it. So, you know, I was around that aspect. And then as many of you know, I did, I did work at Coca-Cola for 10 years. And during that time, I really got exposed to trucking, especially one of the roles I did is I moved to a small town and I managed that area. And when I managed that area, I was in sales, but part of my job was, it was a step up of sales because I actually had to do, you know, all the accounting stuff. I give projections, not just sell, but I had to actually manage things. I had, you know, three drivers. I had a service technician. Now the service technician de technically did report to me, but we had to work together. And I had, you know, there was, we had a few trucks, plus I had my line hauls that had to come in from our main distribution to get the product to us. I had to deal with the seasonalities and there was a lot I dealt with there and I learned even though I wasn't a driver but part of my job was I had to manage my flow like say during the summertime many resort towns get busy and that's really really busy so I had a resort town where I was at and I had to manage when all of a sudden it's super busy getting their maintenance done in our Coca-Cola had a, plant, a maintenance A and a B one was the basic one was the more detailed and it was my job and if I didn't keep it up they would shut me down. So it was my job to maintain all that and just mm -hmm. keep up with. So I learned a lot about managing all that aspect. I had to deal with the night, you know, dealing with my night drivers because that was a hard job because you started at 6 p.m. and you got home at 6 a.m. And uh, give or take to bring the trailers, the empty trailers out to get them loaded. And sometimes, you know, they would drive in the it's winter time. And so often we'd have situation when it was minus 30, they'd get there because we had two pup trailers so that the tailgates would come up and cover the door. So in order to get them loaded at the dock levels, they had to lower them. Well, when it was minus 30 and they drove for three and a half hours, they couldn't get them down. They had to sit there for two hours waiting for the thing to thaw out. Yeah. And so there was a lot of, you know, a lot of things I dealt with that I learned um, mm -hmm. in, in regards to that. And so, and then when I came back from the small town, moved back to the major city, I became a, a bulk distribution manager and actually I was a, another, but when I was a bulk distribution manager where I was dealing with the volume. So I was dealing with the 53 dry vans. We were loading them, going to grocery stores, wholesale clubs, Costco's. And so we would sell the volume. So I'd come back like, you know, and I had to learn how to manage all this. I was managing, I had to stand in front of a, a grocery channel district, you know, an office, a whole conference room full of uh, district managers. And I had to do presentations in front of them. Plus I had to deal with my own internal. So if I came back and there was a volume push and all of a sudden, you know, we had this much volume, all the distribution managers were all up in air and I would have to work with them and prioritize. And so I just got involved in that aspect. And then when someone asked me to join their brokerage, it was a small brokerage. It was a hard decision. It was a really hard decision. And, uh, but I decided to do it and I went in with all feet. And when I started, I did know Adam. I mean, I had sales skills. I had a lot of sales skills and customer service skills. That was my forte. I, and I learned so much in my time there that where, when I got, when I started this, the person that trained me gave me some basics. They gave me some, you know, identifying like on flatbed loads, some of the legal widths and heights, um, about reefers vans and they gave me some basics. Uh, and then they just said, stay away from as a broker, your best bet is stay away from frozen, stay away from pipe and stay away from lumber. And that's was the start of the journey. 
And then I, I just started and I would literally, cause I'm in the, I'm in mountain standard time. I would start at 6 AM my time. So it's eight o'clock in the East. And I would work through until, uh, basically five o'clock my, well, f yeah, five o'clock my time or almost six because it would be four o'clock four between four and five on the West coast. And, you know, when I started out, I had to just, I started and I had a vision. It was so strange. I thought, Oh yeah, I'll go in my backyard. It's a, it's oil country and all this. I'll go out and see customers. So I'd call people and try to do this. And I realized, man, driving around the city, trying to see people face to face and finding out that they have local carriers and the prices they're doing is so this and that. I was getting like five calls in a day, but then you can see when you're making, you know, so I, I changed my strategy and I right. realized me focusing on local was not where the action's at. The action was, I figured out that these customers needing freight coming in from the United States is where they needed the help. And so you got, you got a good bit of exposure to, to a little bit of our side of the industry before you went and became a freight broker. I mean, you were with Coca-Cola managing trucks. Um, no, I wasn't managing trucks. Well, I was maintenance, sales. maintenance. Uh, yeah. yeah, but I learned that. I learned about the maintenance and appreciation yeah. of moving balancing to, time, moving things, moving the things, things and, that the drivers go through. What you know, the challenges they face. So, but I did learn. You, but I did learn a lot. Like I, I would often be in one town selling because right the way I, I had a I had a territory, so I'd have to be selling this town so that in two days the product would come up and then they'd do that delivery. And then what I sold two days before they're delivering. So sometimes they'd be in this town a snowstorm and the tailgate's not working. Well, I learned how to hotwire it. <laughs> it was dangerous, but I learned how to do it. And I could, I could, they'd call me. And like, there's times like it was like in mountainous areas where literally like one time there would be two drivers going up and I had to balance when it was slow, how to not lay them off or cut them off because then I needed more drivers in this, in the peak season. So I had to learn the budgeting of all that aspect of it. Right. But so, the, go ahead. so that basic information, I, I, I imagine a lot of it helped you going into the brokerage aspect of it, having had that, that basic grasp of the information so what is it that you feel that you know our side of it that we should know about what you do that could help us do our job better or run our business better you see what i'm saying like what yeah. what is it about even the basics however deep with it you want to go what is the basics of the freight brokering world that we should know that would help us run our businesses better well i think it's the the process and and if you don't mind I'll, i could share my screen sure absolutely i just I'll, uh... i didn't i didn't get time to finish it full on but kind of give a shell so we have some focus okay if that makes sense and then yeah the idea is that uh you'll be able to you know stay uh you know we can we can modify it and things of this nature right mm -hmm. so let's find... I'm trying to uh get the screen right here There we go. Okay. All righty. So I'll just go right back to the top here and I'll just go into, there we go. Can you still see me? Yeah. Wow. You, you put some time at, holy cow. Well, uh, so <laughs> I wasn't we're, expecting this. Yeah. Well, that's, this is, this is the starting point. So I guess if I was to say, uh, let me just do it this way. Uh, I want to do, hang on. I just got to change it on my end so that I can see, still see myself here and you. Uh, I just got to go this one. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I just moved this guy over. Sorry, I'm just wanting to, It what it does is it's, uh, that's how I want to do it. Okay. It, it looks good on the, on the yeah. screen here. Yeah. No, I just want to, oh, I want to change this back. Sorry. Uh-oh, we lost them all. We lost all of them. I got a feeling it's about to get good here, guys. So don't, uh, don't miss this. We'll get him back in here. He, he bounced himself from the, from the stream here, but he'll be back. We'll be back. Uh, this is important stuff to know. So basically what he's going to tell us is how to, here we go, how to, how to interact with him better. So uh, here, I'll just do this. Sorry, I just got to go. I was trying to, okay, there we go. Let's see if this will work. There go there, here. Okay. So I can't see myself, but that's okay. And I can't see you, but that's okay. So the, the, the first point is being a driver has a whole set of requirements, right? Right. And sorry, I just want to, this is really annoying me. Uh, okay. Let's see if this works. Oh, there we go. That's better. At least I can see now. So 
driving requires a whole bunch of stuff. Like if you talk to anyone becoming a brand new driver, before you worry about the business of trucking, you would say, hey, why don't you just go master the skills of being a driver, right? Okay. Be a driver, local guy, fat, flatbed, learn the basics, backing, driving, all that stuff. But if you're, we're talking now, you're at the point in your driving career, you're, uh, you know, you're, whether you're an owner operator or you have your own authority, this is the point. So if you want to help get yourself better, aligned with brokers and or shippers, direct customers, it's, it's all about your, your comfort level. Like how comfortable are you with a computer? Can you like here, we, at, you know, Adam and I here had an exchange. He asked me, Hey, do you mind joining the thing, the, this, this call on Sunday? He kind of gave me a one line topic, how to more successfully, I asked, what did you want to talk about? He gave me one line. I said, do you mind if I put a little presentation together? So that's the question mark. Could you, if you want to, just as a starting point, could you, do you have a presentation for your carrier that if you had to present in front of a broker or someone else that explains your company, do you have a presentation ready? If you didn't, how long would it take you to create a presentation to sell your company? Listen here, guys. Like he's giving it to you right here. This is, I don't have this. I, I, no, I, I asked Rob, would you come on and talk about this? I, I, that's all I asked. And look, and look what he did. Right. And we're just getting started here. So uh, pro so, tip right off the bat would be lesson number one, go way beyond what you're asked for to do. So is that right, Robert? Yeah. Like I look at it like this, cause I've experienced this with existing brokers. There's, and I can say it within my own brokerage, we have some folks that have been doing it for 20 years. They're excellent at what they do. They have salesmanships, everything else, but where I see that they lack in some of the folks I've dealt with is their computer skills. They don't, okay. we have a TMS and I'll share a quick story. So me, I'm an agent. I have now a sub agent and I have a freight auditor. So I have a, a lady that I hired on contract working 20 hours a week. Okay. And in the process I had, I've had a couple others that have come and con different reasons why they either moved or I wasn't busy enough and I had to cut them off for a period of time. Uh, but the person that I decided to hire this time, I found a person initially in the whole interview process. And that again, having an agent, having me having being part of an agent, being having a brokerage, we have a team and I had people help me. They, they assisted. I interviewed because I know for myself, even from my Coca-Cola days, interviewing people is my absolute weakest weakness. I know it. I'm not like, I know the process. I understand it, but I'm still not great because being an int like interviewing people for a job is it's not as easy like, hey, okay, so what did you do? Yeah, I drove truck for this company for five years. You have to be able to find ways to get beyond the layers because yes. people can make a facade. They can come across excellent on an interview. And when it comes to you hire them and they come to execute, they didn't. A person that comes across as you think, oh, they weren't so good. They were kind of timid or this or that. And you didn't hire them. They may have been your best employee that slipped through your fingers. So an example was, when I did this, I had found a person, um, I put, I put a posting, I had someone to inquire and this person I thought would be perfect because they worked at a company that was my, basically like my, my aunt's cousin, he was a VP at this company. So I know this person. So I thought, Hey, he, and, and she knew when I, when we interviewed, I mentioned this person's name. She knew who he, who he was, uh, cause he's now passed away, but he knew who he was. And, um, so I thought, great. But as we talked, I had a, the person from my brokerage assisting and they, and I, I said, I really want someone that's cause they're doing freight auditing. A lot of it, it's just technology stuff. Some interaction with a few carriers, some phone calls, but 99% of it is on the computer. So they asked, a, they asked a question to this person, this candidate that we were interviewing. They said, if your uh, internet, you know, say your cable TV box stopped working, mm -hmm. what would you do? Uh, and the response, I would, call the, I would call the cable guy because I know nothing about that. I'd find somebody smarter than me. That's what, and that was this person's response. He said, I'd get my son. So then we knew right then and there that that was not going to be like this person had, they were great as far as being in a warehouse and so forth, but their technology skills were not up to level. So then I got a, I got a suggestion, a referral. So the next person I am interviewing, uh, I decided to change my approach. So we communicated by, we had a couple text messages and I said, do you mind if I, uh, send you a, a, you know, some instructions to, to do something. And that's going to be my test. So we scheduled the time and I sent an email explaining what I want them to do. 
And it was as simple as this. And how comfortable would you be doing this, Adam? And this would be the other people. If someone says, you need to download Zoom and join a meeting. Okay. Or TeamViewer. Let's see. I actually use TeamViewer. Okay. Have you heard of TeamViewer? I have not. Okay. So TeamViewer, what that does, <clears throat> it allows you that if you and I were, were talking and, and I want to show you or you were having problems and I want to show you how to do it, I can log into your screen remotely. Oh, okay. So, okay. So that's like a tech help. So vice versa, I could do a Teams, like you and I could be on the phone instead of doing a Zoom call, I could use TeamViewer so I can share my screen with you or vice versa, I could log in and see your screen and show you stuff. So I had this person download, I wanted them to download TeamViewer, open it. I gave them my codes because there's a code and a, and a password and I was standing there waiting. And then when they, when they were able to log into the screen, there was a message I had. Congratulations. You were, you know, you successfully logged into my screen. I would like to schedule an interview because if they couldn't do it, then there was no interview happening. Seems pretty fairly simple, right? Cause that was, that was a critical skill. If they can download a software, open it, enter the co the codes I provided without no instructions. That's the person I was looking for. And this was the person. This person has been fantastic for me. Unfortunately, I'm losing this person now. This person, <laughs> I just found out they gave me notice there. They got basically full-time work back in their position because their reason that they became available, they had a previous position they're doing, but during the vid times, their business got hurt real bad. And they were looking for part-time work, which was perfect. So just everything was perfect. And th this person has been excellent. And unfortunately, uh, this person's had an opportunity to go back to what was her original training in, in the healthcare industry. And she got a full-time job. So she's kudos to her and I'll, you know, salute her well, but next week is her last week. So I will be probably take a little break and then at, at some point have to re go through the process and re go through the training. So this leads to this aspect. So you have a carrier, you've got a brokerage and so forth. The part that if you're a one carrier, one truck carrier, or your brokerage, or you have three trucks, what I look at is a key factor is when you do something, if you're like, Hey, I've done this before, you have to create a process. So it's repeatable. And there's multiple ways of doing that, whether it's writing it on a piece of paper, but because if you want to make it easy, like if you're going to be back in the truck or visiting customers or dealing with things, I like to use technology. I use OneNote, Evernote, or Trello, things to write down processes so that you can share these steps, step-by-step -step procedures with someone else so that if they leave, then you, you're, not, you're not redoing it. And that's where, like, I think on Snorlo's video, I talked about Loom. Loom.com is another great tool to help you prevent yourself from having to repeat twice. So let's say you got a TMS software. So if you, you know, Loom.com, it's basically like a YouTube, like you create a video and it creates a library. And what it does is when you create a library of it, it, you know, I'll, uh, it, it's so simple because like, for example, if you're a carrier and you want to teach your drivers about certain safety procedures, if you want to create a safety course yourself internally, you could, it's so, so simple. And, and to show you how simple it would be is I'm just going to take this. As we're talking here, this is on my phone. And then in a minute, I will be able to, I'll just send you the link. And then at one point, we'll play it. I'll just say, I'll make a quick loom here. Hey, DIY Semi, thanks so much for having me on your show today. Uh, hopefully, we're just in the midst of it. But uh, hopefully, we create some good knowledge to share amongst the trucking community. So that's a sample is just a real quick video thing. You could do this on now when you do it on your laptop, you can share your screen. So if you have a TMS, like for example, onboarding drivers, a great example for you with loom.com is if you have a carrier and you're going to onboard owner operators or direct company drivers, instead of you having to spend hours and hours reteaching the same thing over and again, how to use the log, your, your logbook app, your ELD, I should say. You could create like a video saying, okay, when you're in the truck, here's how you do it. And then you could actually do it on your screen, but you could then, you know, set up your camera and show it step by step. Okay. So then th they can, you just show them, you share them the links. And then if they forget how to do it, they can go back to the video. They can speed up the video, slow it down. And if they still have questions, they can come to you with a question, but you've given them tools to help solve problems themselves. And you're not having to redo the redundant steps. Now, could I, 
could I uh, steal some knowledge from you here? I saw you use Loom on uh, Snorlord's channel once uh, in yep. a capacity of, hey, how could a driver interact with a broker? Using I Loom? did that. I actually, that's, that's exactly what we talked about at Steve's thing. So with Loom, and that's exactly how we did it with Steve's example, after a load, if you want to do it before the load, or after load, the best that I would suggest is after load. And we're going to get into some of the talks about the broker stuff. But okay. after a load, if you delivered the load, you if you're the driver, you could just make a quick video, hold your phone. Because with Loom, there is a fee. That one gives you, like, you could make 30-minute videos, 40-minute videos explaining. The free version allows you to make five-minute, up to a five-minute video for free. And the okay. beauty is, unlike YouTube, where it's like a big file, you're sending a link. You're just sending a simple link. And uh, so I'm just going to click on here, share. And I'll go like this. Let's go. Okay. So I will forward this momentarily, but... Um, Basically, you could make a quick video saying, hey, this is Rob. I was the driver that delivered your load to Wisconsin. Um, wanted to thank you very much. You could walk down and say, yep, take a look. Here's the load emptied. No problems or whatever. Just want to say thank you so much for your load. Um, hey, I'll be my next available truck is here. Let me know if you have any freight going in this direction or if you'd like to schedule a meeting. I would sure like to learn more about your business. Something to that effect. Or just make it as a quick thank you. And then send them the POD with that link. And the link, what's nice about it, it tells you if you've, uh, if it's been opened, if they viewed it or not. That's, oh. the, the, that's the other nice thing because it tells you history and within it, you can, uh, let's see if this, there we go here. I'll just go like this. Oops. So basically you're adding a personal touch to it that I guarantee you nobody else is doing right. I think that's the uh, that's the key there is no one else is doing it. <laughs> that's really the key. So if you check your email, the email thread that you and I were working on, okay. you'll see that. So you could even just right now just to show. I mean, I could have done it faster, but I was just trying to talk and send it at the same time. Yep, no problem. It should be. So you can go ahead and share it. You have to turn your do the audio trick or whatever that is, and yep. then we'll go back to the presentation. I don't have it quite yet. But as soon as it comes, I'll put it up here. So basically, but, uh, the, the summary of knowledge is you have to start to do what no one else is doing. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to be completely, you know, when I say doing no one else do, not saying take the worst loads in the world. No, it's just, I believe the key to success long-term is small, consistent steps over time. That's it. That's the formula. Small, consistent steps over time. And if you think, well, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. Kind of like, think of it this way. If I asked you, or anyone else, could you do 30 or 20? Could you do 10 chin-ups as a simple answer? Like, let's use a chin-up, right? 10 chin-ups. Could you do 10 chin-ups or 15 chin-ups at once? A lot of people would say, no, I couldn't, right? But what if I said, could you do one chin-up every minute for 10 minutes? And then if you think, yeah, one minute, what can you do in one minute? That's really what it comes down to. What can you do in one minute? Okay, should we try this? I got it up on the screen here. Yeah, go ahead. Um, oops, I guess I got to play it through the other. Yeah, just click it on there. You hey, DIY, DIY Can you hear that? Thanks so much for having me on your show today. Uh, hopefully, we're just in the midst of it, but uh, hopefully, we create some good knowledge to share amongst the trucking community. Were you guys able to hear that? Yep. And in fact, yeah. as as you talked to me, I received the notification on my phone that the video was viewed. Okay. So then, not only are you adding a personal touch to to the situation but then you can also see hey does this person care enough to pay attention well they the broker You're, can give you can give it you can give a reaction to the video right you can see right. if you if yep. you you can make a comment on the yep. video and as you can see on the left hand side you can create libraries when you create a team and so forth yeah, so now i can put a comment in here that i that i watched it and i'm i'm gonna post a comment yep and then you can see not only that i watched it there. And then, you see, know, yeah, if you heard that sound, I was, you probably didn't hear the sound, but yep, I got I a note. It. Yep. And it says, so, uh, thank you very much. So you I just learn, received. you learn about the person you're doing business with too. 
Did he well, watch puts it? A, it puts a face to the name. Right. Shows you what you look like. And when you put a face to a name, if there's any animosities like, hey, you know what? I'm super, lawyer, super sorry. Even if you're late. Just, you know, if you were late for whatever reason saying, you can even make that video saying, hey, uh, hey, I know I was late two hours, but, you know, it was, hey, first off, hey, it's, you know, Rob, I just want to say thank you very much for your business. Uh, I know I was two hours late and I apologize. It's right here. See this new glad hand that there was replaced or see this new, you open up your hood and show like, hey, this belt, we had to replace this belt right here. That was the problem. So I'm just showing you right here um, that but I just wanted to thank you for your business and uh, looking forward to working with you again. Yeah, I really mm -hmm. like that. Keep I, it simple. I, I really like the fact that nobody else is doing it and that something like that will just set you apart. I brought it up on store loads, but I don't yeah. know how many people did it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's excellent. And Loom is a great tool that if you need to ever teach someone how to do something, you can use that tool. You know, and in fact, let's say you you got it, you you switched ELD providers. Well, you can record your, you can record the screen so that you don't have to rewatch it twice or whatever the case is. Let's say it's a live webinar that you got invited to at the for the ELD company. They say, join this webinar to learn how to use this tool or this new feature. You can record the screen so you have that copy, right? Yeah. And it yeah. allows for some basic uh, stuff in there. So, so Thanks. that's kind of the 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 gist. The, the the gist is as a starting point to understand where I'm going with to help carriers is really, really improve your technology skills. So I look at it, the way I explain to people, like the lady that's my freight auditor, I said to them, imagine a semi-truck. And I showed a picture of a dashboard. You've got all these gauges. You've got air buttons, switches for lights, and your rear axle differential locks. All this, these buttons, you got scales and lights and all this stuff. There's all these dashboards. But truckers mm -hmm. know what every button does. Okay, that's my... That's my meter for this is my air pressure here. Okay, this is my, this tells me if I'm, if I'm running too hot, that means I'm running the engine too heavy. If I have a heavy load, I know where I'm at. This tells me this, this tells me my fuel. This tells me all kinds of stuff. Everything on that truck tells me things. So as a freight person, whether you're a dispatcher for a carrier or you're a broker, your job is when you open up a computer and you have a TMS system, transportation management software system, and you're using it, your job is to know what every button does. You shouldn't, because how I know people, when I say, do you see that button on the left? Uh, no, I don't see that. Because <laughs> you don't understand how to navigate. Like how fast can you, how fast can you place an Amazon order? How fast can you do things like sign up to an account without problems? Those are the, the basics. Can you download software, open it, install it, right? Get it up and running and use it. Right? How fast right. can you do those things? So those are the things that's going to help you set you apart. If you want to get that, you have to be excellent with your technology skills and adaptable because sometimes customers, if you want to work with a certain customer, they may work with certain software, like for example, TransPlace, right? Because that's a 3PL. So if you work with a customer and then you found out that they get TransPlace post the available freight on that board, you have to learn how to use that system, how their system works. So you have to be adaptable. And I learned that in my Coca-Cola days. That was the number one thing I learned. We didn't, why is Coca-Cola the biggest brand in the world? It's not because they're just the biggest brand in the world. Their feet on the streets. When I was a district manager and I had an office, they, didn't, they wanted us barely in the office. They want us in the street teaching, coaching our account managers daily, not just once, ongoing all the time. And the other reason that they're big is they adapt their communication to the customers. We don't come in and talk to them about us. We adapted. Like we had a Walmart Bible that literally all the lingo, like when you say a display rack, display of the pallet, I want a pallet display at the front of a Walmart. Well, that's not what managers know that as. It's called a comp rail. If you go to them saying, hey, I, I could sell you this much product. No, what a Walmart? It's velocity. Mm-hmm. You, you adapt like so if you're in the elevator with the CEO of any company, can you talk to them about their lingo? You have to learn to speak their language. That's right. You may or, think you may think rate per mile. You may think cost per day. That's fine for you. But right. if you're talking to a broker or to a customer, what's their lingo that's going to capture their attention? This is this is one of the biggest holdbacks. Oh, thank you, Jackknife TV Search Super Chat, by the way. This is one of the biggest things that that we have to learn. We have to learn how to do business with people. It's not just what we want. And, and it's not just, oh, I can move this freight at this rate. If you understand the rest of it, like the, the whole logistics world, you can become a part of it.
It's it's about becoming a part of it. You can do a you can do you know one off transactions, the rest of your life, the rest of your whole career, or or you can get involved in the in the in the whole world of it, and that's that's where longevity happens. Well, that's where we'll you do, make it through the ups and downs. And what we're going to do today to help out is, I'm going to I have a pen and paper here that as we go along, if we think of it's a, a nugget, we're going to try to put a timestamp. So okay. then at the end of this, when you repost this. It's real easy if you haven't done before. Have you ever added chapters to your your videos? I haven't really. Um, I, I should. But we'll try it today. Okay. It's a simple thing to do, and it's super, super easy. And we'll just see if I can remember when they are, and we'll just I'll send you the list. You just have to copy and paste it into the description. When you copy and paste it, it will, YouTube does its thing, and it turns it into chapters so people can jump around to where they want to be. Just, again, something else no one else is doing. So let's go back to sharing my screen, if you don't mind, just okay, to keep yep, us on. So otherwise, we don't. I, I, right, I'll kind of right, show right. you the where I'm, where I want to kind of go with. Uh, so the kind of agenda was the top line, and then we'll I will kind of talk with you. But basically, ways to book freight with brokers anytime, anywhere versus lane. Understand the customer to understand the broker. Promote your carrier. One hit wonder. How is versus how is the full album? Schedule a meeting. What solutions can you bring? That's the kind of top line I want to address. Uh, does that seem fair? It, absolutely. So that right there was a sales, that's sales. So if you've never done a sales call and you've always wanted to do a sales call, if you're a carrier and you're like, yeah, I hate brokers. I'm done with brokers. I need to get my own freight. But that little thing I did there, see, I presented something. I got permission from Adam before I move. Is that okay with you? That little question mark. Because how does that make you feel versus me saying, I'm going to talk to you about this? Wait a minute. Stop this. Now you're manipulating me. <laughs> and, and you know why? You don't even know that you did. Because when you said that, you know what it made me do? Okay, you, you set me up for this. And I don't know if you intended to or not. But I didn't just... actually, I didn't even intend to this, but I just thought this is a learning opportunity right you there. Set me up Oops. For this. Whoops, one second. Um, so what what you said just before we did this, and then what I did, you said, what what are we gonna do? We're gonna create timestamps, right? So when you when you asked me that question, you set the table and then you asked me the question, is that okay with you? You know what I did? I wrote down a timestamp here of 3630 and I wrote agenda. So what we just did is we set the table of context for the rest of the program, right? Right. So I wrote that down as a timestamp and we're gonna put that as a timestamp. And then, see, I asked you if it's okay to proceed with that. Because if you yeah. said, no, there's some, I don't like some of those topics, then that's the open, that's what you want, yeah. is that if I said to you, is that okay with you? And you said, well, I don't mind that, but I'd rather you take out this one thing, then we'll so, modify that. So, so you guys, see, it even works on me. So that's how, like, and I should have seen it coming. Like, I understand, but no, that's how it works, right? It just right away, it, it, what you did made me do that. So it, it results that's the, whether you key, know it or not. That if you go into a sales calls, whether you're dealing with a bro, if you're the carrier, you want to learn about your broker or you want to go direct shipper, we're going to keep it open to either direction. Okay. When you first off, you listen more than you speak. You want to find out all about them. But secondly, as you talk to them, always, always seek permission and repeat back to confirm that you understood what was said. Make notes so that when you send it, when I send a follow up email, to a customer. So in this case, if you sat down and actually had a, we're going to get into it, but if you're having an in-depth conversation with someone like a broker, send them a quick email saying, Hey, thanks so much for your time. We discussed the following and you identified that there's one burning issue here. So you just summarize what it is. It creates a little chain and it creates history. And also it shows that person that you're speaking to, you were listening. Mm -hmm. And in order to advance that level, of communication and let me just give me one second here okay so is this is this all that i that cdn is the genius of all and i've created this and i know everything in the world absolutely not you know why see this tattered up see it's all taped up because mm -hmm. <laughs> guess why Ah, Coca-Cola. So, you, so, so you, do you think I took my I took my knowledge for granted? 
I've been living and breathing this. Do you know how many IBM sales people do have done the same thing? IBM has one of the premier sales training classes in the world. And those people, even after they leave IBM, whatever they go on to do, it doesn't matter what they do. They are some of the most successful people in the world. If you can sell for IBM, you, you can do anything sales related. There's And there's one other thing here that I will share. We'll, we'll, maybe we'll put it in afterwards. But basically this concept, the, the basics of it is this little beauty. This little beauty. It's going to be hard to see because, but basically, yeah. so you got, so we got the foundation level, the collaboration level. Wrong guy. I'm trying to put you up here solo. Yep. So we got. <laughs> we'll just do that. Sorry. How there? Here we go. Okay. So the top levels, we won't get into the details, but basically foundation, collaboration, alliance. And you see how the trust level goes up. The goal, whether it doesn't matter what you are in sales, whether you're selling insurance, you're selling widgets, you're selling the services as a freight broker. Doesn't matter what you're selling. Your goal is that you get to that alliance level. You you start out that you get to that personal commitment with you and your customer. You speak, you have shared risk, and you speak with one voice. When you can do that, that's what creates long-term lasting business relationships. So yes. that's that's kind of the 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 gist of that. Um, so yeah, so the agenda was. Ways to book freight, anytime, anywhere versus lane. Understand the customer to understand the broker. Promote your carrier. One hit wonder. How is the full album? Schedule a meeting. What solutions can you bring? So let's just go back to kind of the basics. Okay. So because the whole issue has been around, you know, the, the issues around carriers not being happy with brokers, thinking that there's problems. So just to keep it neutral, no, you know, it's just facts. That's, that's really what I'm looking at is the facts, taking emotion out of that. So when you want to work, and I think that's maybe something that needs to get reiterated is the rules of engagement per se. When you're going to enter, if, if you're a company driver, right? And all of a sudden you had that illusion, that, hey, I can get a lease truck so I can drive my own truck. That's what the appeal is. I get to drive my own truck versus having to change trucks all the time. That's sometimes what starts when you're a Swift driver or you worked for Werner as a company driver, all of a sudden you get the incentive to become a lease driver because you get that choice of a truck <clears throat> and it's your truck. Now you're talking to people and your friends and other people and they're like, hey, you should get out of that lease and go buy your own truck. Get a, either join up to a carrier as an owner operator or get your own authority, right? So where this is that we're not going to talk about being a company driver. We're not going to talk about being a lease driver because there's a whole different aspect to that, right? We're talking about <clears throat> dealing with brokers on the open market. Would that be fair kind of focus? Yes, yes, absolutely. So what I think needs to be emphasized is that if you're a driver and you're sharing, you're hearing a driver saying, yeah, I got this dispatcher. They're just terrible. They don't treat me well and so forth. And they're getting frustrated. They're good drivers but they don't like the company they're at. So they're thinking about making a change so they could switch company driver roles from one company to the next, become a lease operator. And all of a sudden they're like, yeah, I want to have more control. So they hear about this. Well, if you're talking to them, you know, I'm not going to, you guys have all the knowledge about sharing what cost and all the stuff about how much money you need for all that stuff that we're, we're not talking about that. The only thing message I would say is if you're talking to someone, you know, that is about to enter into buying a truck to get onto the open market, Remind them, when you're going to work with brokers, this is what you're going to encounter. Just know in advance. You have to choose. Once you choose your path, just know that we're going to talk about these different levels. And so when you're booking a freight with brokers, you hear about brokers. Okay, well, how do you get them? Well, you can use their Book Now apps. There's many of them out there. In fact, I've never used it. I have the software. Our software allows us to book, book it now, but my freight doesn't. I always have to qualify my carriers too much. So I can't do that. And we'll, I'm not going to get into full details because that's varies so much. But the point is, how do you get freight? You can get your authority, sign up to a carrier, a broker that has book now, Uber freight, convoy, right? CR, you know, there's, there's gamuts of, of different book it now freight, or you can go into load boards where sometimes there's a posted freight, right? Sometimes there's not, you got choices, but the point is 
You got the oh, sorry, it'd be the Book It Now app or their load board, the carrier's load board. Then there's the open load board, you know, the typical three letter one, one, two, three load board, et cetera, et cetera, truck stop, so forth. The other way that you can get freight is if you connect with brokers and they send out email lists of available freight. That's another way to get their loads. Internal, now again, we're not talking rates. This is just how to get access to the freight available in the marketplace. Their internal load board, where it's not posted by email, but <clears throat> they give, they've signed you in or you have access to their, you know, it's like joining Landstar, many other carriers, CH Robinson will have some internal and ourselves, we have some internal load boards uh, for some freight. Not all agents always post it there, but that's available. And then the other option is obviously contract. For some brokers who may have contract freight, that's another option. It's a whole different avenue, but it's another way to get freight from a broker because that's what we're talking about, right? So does that kind of make sense? Am I missing anything there? Um, <clears throat> not really. No, that looks pretty good. Okay. So the first topic was because I need to kind of set the premise. And again, as you see, as I go along, because I didn't have time to finish the full deal, but anytime, anywhere versus lane versus mode. And Snorlord talks about a lot about this because of his dispatching that he does, right? He will talk about, well, if you're a driver that's willing to go anytime, anywhere, well, there's two things that happen typically, and you can share if I'm wrong at this, but my experience has been if you're a driver that's willing to drive all over the country anytime, anywhere, you're doing it for a couple of reasons. One, maybe you're not married, and so you're using trucking as a way to see the countryside, right? You're making a living doing your thing, but you're perfectly, you know, comfortable and willing to do different places for the sake that you want to go there just to see it out. And if I'm getting paid a decent money, I'll go. The other reason you're doing it is you're just chasing that. You're just chasing money, pure and simple. We know that there's a lot of, there's a lot of smaller carriers. That's what they'll do. They'll just chase the money. Hey, there's a good paying load. I'll go there. And so the, the, there's a, you know, pro that you get to chase the money. But there could be a consequence, and I'm sure you could do a whole show about that, that you take this nice paying load going from, you know, as we know, you got to make your money into Florida, because if you don't, you're not going to get paid out. If you go to, you took a great paying load, seven, six, seven bucks a mile, even going to New Mexico, but then you realize there's nothing out of New Mexico. So how much deadhead do you have to do? So you have to be, again, rules of engagement, going into the free market of working with brokers. You have to understand that when you're in anytime, anywhere, uh, in some sense, you're very much susceptible to the market fluctuations. So you may benefit, but then you may suffer at the same time in one load, right? You, you get a super paying, good paying load, uh, but then you may suffer on the other end, lack of volume. And if you didn't account for that, that you had the bunch of deadhead, you know, it can hurt you. But at the same time, the pro could be because you are flexible, you've made some strong relationships with brokers, like take my brokerage I'm at, that the way we work is we have a head office and we have a couple, they have a little bit of a sales internal operations, but, but the brunt of our brokerage is agent based. We have agents throughout Canada, literally from coast to coast. And we have brokers in all corners, Florida, Texas, Idaho, Washington is Portland, Seattle, mm -hmm. and all the way in, in Illinois. Like we got agents everywhere. I'm not saying we're the biggest in the world, but the point is we have agents dispersed all over. So right. if, if you know, and the, the hard part to, to realize is that when you have an agent like this, so if someone calls me saying, hey, I see this load posted and I look, it's not my load, I can't help them because okay. I don't, it's not my freight. It's not my thing to do. I have to just refer them to the person that's there. That's all I can do, right? And if, you know, that's that, so that, but maybe through that connection though, they realize that different, you know, maybe there's this one agent that has freight going here and there's another agent that has freight going there. And, you know, you can keep busy by staying with one agent, kind of like, you know, CH Robinson has incentives. If you do enough volume with them, they offer you fuel cards, they offer you, you know, quick pays, et cetera. Right. Right. So, so there's, you know, the anytime. So the point is, is that in, in a lot of cases, if you're complaining about brokers and you, you know, you're just basically you know, jumping around from load to load where you're not going to be doing a repeat load for this broker anytime soon, you really can't complain because you're not putting no consistency. You're just jumping around from not load building to load. anything. You're right. not building, you're chasing. Right. I think from, from Steve's point of view as a dispatcher, when he says it's good for a driver to be anytime, anywhere, what actually what he's referring to is, you know, when it's slow like this, uh, if you're going to stick to the 
concept of I only do certain things. I only haul this much weight. I only run days or I have to be home every weekend. I think what he's kind of referring to is, you know, if you're willing to branch out and go outside the things you're normally willing to do and be in anywhere, anytime, I can find you a load, you know, rather than sitting and say, I only run Missouri to Ohio and back. Well, right? well it, exactly. Well, here's the other thing too. I have a carrier that like a lot of my freight that I move is not on boards. I've developed a relationship with certain carriers and basically with certain carriers and so I call them first and it's only as a last resort that I may have to use a load board. So this past Friday, five o'clock, a customer drops four loads for me picking up Monday and Tuesday. So I have two pickups on Monday and I thought, well, this one carrier I might be able to use both with. So the first load they accepted and then we, we used the same rate as we did just a week and a half ago. The second load was a local move and I kind of suggested the rate and this person's declined. So they could have had two loads for me, but they liked the one because I was paying them well enough, but the second one was less than what he felt. So he declined it, right? So right. that's the choices. And I booked it with another carrier. So it's just that it's interesting that I could have given both and he could have looked at different perspectives of it, but he's chosen not to do the second one. So, yeah, and, I, and I've, I hold nothing against him and I know where he stands and because we've had the conversations, I know his capabilities and what he's after and where he's going. So, um, but yeah, so the whole point here is just saying, as we get through this little agenda, the, I look at the anytime, anywhere is not just what you're saying about Steve's, but I mean like literally where you're just like looking for the best paint, whether you're staying in a certain right. region, but the point is all you're willing to do is you just want to chase the money. Well, a lot of this goes away. You're not playing the rest of this game for the long term. You're just that's playing perfect. a short game. There's, there's, yeah. It's perfectly fair. Whether you're taking a high paying load to go from Seattle to Pennsylvania or you're just staying locally in the Missouri area, right? It doesn't matter. Or if you're staying locally in California or something, it's a point that when you're anytime, anywhere and all you're just looking at is the dollar signs, then the rest of this doesn't really apply to you per se, because that's just not where that's not where you want to be at this point. Maybe you'll change, but for now you just want to chase money. And there's nothing wrong with that because why you can do it. Right. That's the beauty of the, of the low, of the free market. You can the, do the, it. There will come a time where it's not so possible. True. And, uh, and then you're, and then you're really in a pinch, but yep. you know, so we're just talking some different ideas. And again, this is just my perspective. Remember, I'm not saying that this is the only way. And this is like, that is the whole beauty of all of logistics is that it's so diverse. What you're doing today, you can shift, may set you back slightly, but it could bring you further ahead in the long term, right? Like for your business, you might be doing dry van freight. All of a sudden, people keep asking you, hey, do you have bottom hoppers? No, I don't. Then you get a call again. Do you have bottom hoppers? No, I don't. Third time, do you have bottom hoppers? You're like, hmm, I wonder if I should be looking into this. So you yeah. start diving into it and you realize, well, you look at the money and the cost and you're like, how much are these loads paying? Then you look at what's it going to cost me to get these trailers? How much work is involved? How much training? And then you realize, hmm, you know what? I'm going to try this out. So you rent, maybe you go rent some just to see how it goes. And, you know, then you might all of a sudden shift your business from what you started as a drive van carrier, maybe create a second division of dry hopping. I don't know. I'm just using that as an example. Right. Right. So as we talk about the, the key part of it, when you say that, you know, the broker is either taking too much money or keeping too much money or all these different issues that are we're hearing on the YouTubes right now, people complaining about this. So. I think that the, the first step we have to do is take a step back. When you get a load, once you actually book a load, like we kind of jumped ahead, you have a load in hand, right? A load confirmation. You kind of have to think to yourself, understand the customer to understand the broker. So meaning, you've picked up at this warehouse before. You've seen a load poster. You're like, oh, okay, I kind of got an idea. You know, this is, and like you've talked about this and Steve has talked to many others. When you see a load posted in a certain lane, you kind of got an idea. It's one of three warehouses that you're going to be picking up that this load is for. Right. The question is, if you go there this week and you booked it with ABC Logistics, and then two weeks later you go back and now you're booking it the same load, but it's with one, two, three brokerage. And then two weeks later, it's with someone else. So 
if you saw that every two weeks, it's someone different or every month, it's a different broker. What would that tell you? The customer's bargain shopping. Exactly. So that when you see that, so what that means to help, you just have to say to yourself, okay, so this, it's not the broker, it's the shipper in this case. <clears throat> They're not willing to commit to one brokerage to service their needs. What that means is that the broker went out there, found this customer, connected with them, spoke about that, hey, I can offer you service. And they say, fine. They set up through their, their you know, because that's another whole aspect that if you want to get yourself to that next level, you have to be, you know, no different than broker contracts. If you want to work direct with shippers, there will be some times that I could share with you that after you've gone through some of the stuff, you'd be like, I'm glad I'd rather work with this shipper, this warehouse. I like getting the freight, but I'd rather book it through the broker because working directly with the shipper is not as easy as I thought. Their conditions that they put out there and the things you have to agree to is not what I thought. So that's where you have to start with. Before you make an assumption on the broker and saying, well, how much do they keep and so forth? Think about first off, how did how who's who's paying the freight and how are they working? So if you've gone there several times and you're always getting it through different brokerages, that means that that shipper, basically what they do, they have their five, six, 10 brokerages that they have set up in their system. Some salesperson or purchase order person takes their available freight. We got a PO for 10 loads of water, PO 10 loads of you know rolls of paper. They put it out to their shipping person or the logistics person. And that person has an email distribution list and they blast it out. And then they let those 10 or five to 10 brokers bottom feed in the, and the, at the, I use the terminology, empty, po empty pond, like goldfish starving. Let the, the one that can come out with the best rate that day at that moment in time, they get the load. That's right. it. There's nothing you can do about it. So yeah. Now, what those same shippers that chop, because I have a few customers that are like that, where they throw it out to me some loads, but there's also times where they've had issues where a load didn't get moved. And then someone who committed them a rate failed to have a truck or didn't show. Then they'll call me saying, Hey, like I, I can tell the difference when I get an email, I can tell right away if it's a bid load, like they're just blasting it out to multiple people, or is it, they they've come to me specifically, they're relying on me to get that load covered. There's a big difference there, huge difference. So if you know that they've come to you once that it's all about, again, the whole game of logistics, and it's probably no different than a lot of industries, but really when it comes to the power of negotiation, it's about who has the most power in the situation. If you know that, like once you have a load in hand and you discover there's issues with the load, the carrier has the power, has more power because they have the load. If there's problems, you can do more versus, you know, like it's always about the, the, you know, that's how negotiations work. It's about shifting power, no different than a broker and the carrier and the customer communicating. Right. So that like no different than like this is if you say, Hey, this lane should pay, I'll take this lane if it pays 1500 all the time, but brokers are out there blasting it at $900,000, $1,100. But you're like, this lane should be worth 1500. So then you get a chance to get direct to that shipper and you go out there and quote 1500 how many of those shippers are going to accept that 1500 <laughs> well <laughs> it's going to vary it's going to yeah right? it's going to vary that's the point just cuz you think that this lane should pay 1500 you have to understand the customer so now this gets you down to the next level if you've booked the same load for the last couple of years and it's always the same broker like you were in this area, you got this load once and you went back six months later, same broker, you called them up. Hey, do you have that load there? Yep, I got that load. And then you realize if it's been two or three years, that means that that broker has a solid relationship with that customer, right? They're working well together because he's been doing it consistently. So ultimately what you want to do before you make assumptions of what is perceived versus what is actually happening See if you can map it out on a napkin, how many parties are involved and who is the broker charging? What out of the whole transaction, you got the broker who gave you the load. Who's the broker charging? Are they charging the consignee, the shipper, or is it a different company altogether? Because yeah. if you walk into, uh, if you go to a big warehouse and you see 
Swift trailers all over or just Snyder trailers all over. And then you're like the one, there's like two independent trailers there. That generally means that load was arranged, customer arranged, not the warehouse there that has all the Schneiders. Uh, your customer asked that they wanted to arrange their own truck. Maybe they felt I've had it where I've had customers will email me saying, Hey Rob, I got this load. The supplier provided me this quote. Can you match or beat it? If you can match or beat it, I'd rather you look after it. So they've shared with me insight. So I know where I need to be. And sometimes I'll reply back saying, yes, I definitely can match that. Or I look at the lane and saying, that's a fantastic rate. If they can't get a truck, let me know. But that is very, very competitive, right? Sometimes because mm -hmm. it's lower than what I could actually move it for. So it goes both ways. But the key to, before you make <clears throat> any assumptions, stop and say, who's involved? What's involved? And how many parties are involved? And it all comes into that because it, you don't know really what's happening with the brokerage because the bigger the brokerage working with a shipper may entail contracts that have rebates. It may have brokerage, like for example, for yourself, if you were given a load in a lane that you like and you're like, yep. And the customer says, yeah, you wanted 1200 in the lane or 1500. And they're like, well, if you can do 14, I'll give you this lane pretty consistently. And you're like, okay, I can do that for 14. Oh, but by the way, we want consolidated invoicing once every 30 days. Mm. So now, wait, are you, willing to, are you willing to book 30 days of loads, send them one invoice with listing all the load numbers, and, and, then, and then you invoice them? So instead of billing them 1,400, say they give you this load twice a week because it works out twice a week. Right. So 14 times 2 times it by 4. So it's $11,200 that you have to wait 30 days before you bill. 30 days before I bill, and then wait another 30 to 45 days before being paid. Exactly. So yeah, sometimes you have to be a little bit uh, bigger to absorb these things. And so that's th that's what I'm saying is before you jump to the conclusion, you have to understand right. all those steps. Right, yeah. But let me let me stop you for a second and thank you. This is, this is great. Uh, you guys that are watching this, I appreciate it. And I just want you to know, Rob, the people that are watching this, uh, are here because they care about improving their business. You, you'll notice, you know, everybody in the comments is being very respectful and thankful. I want you to know how much this is appreciated. And just, just, you know, the, this is a lot of these things are, are things people have not heard or considered before. So I, I given some time to think about it, I, I think a lot of people are going to realize how important some of these things are. Yeah. Like, I'm not sure it's going to, you know, convey in like, and again, some of these tips may not apply to your business right it just may not apply to your to your book of business and that's that's fair like you have to when you like anything else when you do stuff on the internet you have to be able to filter it and identify how legitimate is this information how does it apply to me can i actually utilize some of this information or not and you have to take it nuggets and and say yeah that's going to work that's not going to work and and you have to dive into yourself so it's how much you know time and because you think about it there is so much you, your channel alone, you have tons of information. Like if YouTube was to say, okay, no more videos effective tomorrow, but all the other videos are still there. How many are going to go back and watch all of your videos that teach you how to start your brokerage, how to get your, how to do your different, uh, uh, if the filings or other things. And you go to the different channels that are out there that have actual knowledge and listen to it and actually do it. Because there's a lot of knowledge um, that are, that's there. How many of you gone like go to the internet truck stop? I know that you may or not may like them or not like them, but they have multiple webinars that teach mm -hmm. you how to build your customer base. How to there's all I can send you the links that's all there. That's them doing it. Like yeah, it's it's lean towards them, but they are giving some pretty solid nuggets of information. So it's a matter of your choice of how much time and effort you want to put in to your business. If you're like, See, well, we, I'm, go ahead. We, we can do things like this that you and I are doing right, right now. And uh, I'm, I'm doing this because like I see, let's be honest. There's a lot of emotional reactions going on right now. You, you see it. I see it. Um, the, just screaming and yelling about brokers, which, Hey, I understand you're upset about it. Don't get, you know, I'm upset about it too, but what good does it do me? And what, what does it say about me to come on YouTube and scream about it? Right. The, the yeah. better solution is to come on YouTube and do things like this. Hey, right. We'll, we'll find somebody from that side. 
which is Rob right here who's generous enough to do this for us. And, and hey, you know, basically we put it here and we say, hey, Rob, teach us how to do business with you, right? That yeah. helps. That helps people. That helps you and us because, like you said, speaking the language of Walmart, speaking the language of Coca-Cola, if I can learn to speak your language, we communicate differently. And now you're telling us about your customer and what your customer wants. Hey, my customer said if I take all these loads, you know, two, 14 loads, that I can have them all at this rate. And then I know that and I say, hey, well, I'm your guy, right? This is this is something that I do or something I can do. Or I'll modify my operation to do that for you. Your customer said you can have this lane every week for the next year. Hey, let's you and I do that. Right. So that's where we're. I'm kind of leading to that. Um, kind of get the long way to get there, but basically I kind of wanted to put this preference that before we let's take the emotion out yes. and the frustration. I agree. I agree. Step one is stop and you're going to think this broker gouged me or whatever. You have to define to yourself what gouging means. That's you. And you have every right to believe that if you believe it, well, one, you can stop using that broker Two, You could like, I've actually had where I've posted my load, like remember, remember I said, I have a few customers that will kind of shop the market. Right. And I've had carriers say, yeah, I see that load posted by others. I said, you probably see this load posted by others. Yes, I do. But they called me. Why? Because they would rather work with me. And they'll say to me, yeah, these other brokers are trying to flog it at this price. So you go do it for this price. And I would rather, I want you to get this load because I need that load. You go quote it at this and I know you're going to get it. And then I want you to book it with me. Because why? The things that I do for my carriers. The consistent, like I, you know, the, I have accurate, accurate load confirmation details. They know their drivers. I set up my, I, I believe that every, I'm only as good as my last load. I want the drivers to be successful and I want my customers to be successful. That it's a, as good of a, a transaction so that the driver doesn't arrive uneducated about the load. The shipper knows who's coming and they're aware of the load. So all parties are on the same page. There's no, you don't show up like a deer in the headlight looking at the shipper like, yeah, I'm here for what? Well, no, I, I, I go, I go through everything. I, I, more often than not, I find things that my customer is not even dealing with. And that's the other thing as a, if you've never dealt with a shipper and been on a big, long email thread of communication on how things work, where they're pl placing an order with the supplier and then they, they, they add you into the emails and you're going through all this stuff. And you're having to ask questions and understand like and they give you some basic information and so forth like it, it there's a lot to it that happens besides like that's the difference between a good and a bad broker or just an entry level broker and an advanced broker um that those extra little details like i've had oh yeah it's a job site well okay what does it say because i think of it as when i create my load confirmation if they say it's going to be something i, I know i'm i want to know the sign the driver is looking like we're driving you know, a 53 flatbed or a dry van with the sleeper. So you're, you're 75, 80 feet. He can't just do three sixties, right? I want to know what sign is he looking for? And what is the procedure when he arrives? Does he have to stop and see at the security gate? Like I go through all those steps and I make all those instructions. There. And, and I also often, you wouldn't believe how often shippers will give me a contact and I phone the contact and they said, well, actually, I'm not going to be on site until this day. I said, okay, so who's actually on site? Well, you got to talk to this person. Then I call that person. They say, well, the day of that delivery, I'm not going to be there till this time. So you have to call the gender, this person and get them. So I'm doing those. Does it seem like a, like simple things with some phone calls? But I'm, feed, I'm weeding through the forest mm -hmm. to help simplify for the driver is my goal. And if I can't do that, I haven't done my job. Pure and simple. Right. But I thought yeah. I thought all brokers did was book, put things on a load board and have pretty a much hundred dollar a month broker bond. You, yeah, you tell me there's more to it. Just a, just, a, <laughs> just there's just a little bit to it. Um, so so basically, when you can when you can actually understand who's involved and the players involved, and you can ask questions around because often you know you can go to a warehouse, but you that warehouse is just a shipping facility. The people there right. are just they receive orders from their office that there's a truck coming to pick up PO 17654 yes. and you're told to pick up 17654 and both of you don't know much more than that. Yeah. I this is a constantly in the reefer business. If you go to a Lineage Logistics, Lineage Logistics did not arrange for that truck. Uh Kraft or, you know, Wells or whoever Land Lakes, they arranged that truck. And then it was scheduled the Lineage to have the load ready at this time on this date. And then 
I tell you what, Kraft might not even be paying that bill. It might be the receiver. It might be, you know, UNFI. They yeah. might have arranged the truck. There could be, there's a lot of people involved in this sometimes. And we encounter that all the time in the refrigerated business. So this one here, I'm just, uh, if you go back to sharing my screen, I'm going to, I'll okay, add well, some. It went away. Add, okay. Yeah. If you can, oh, okay. did I, oh, okay. Yep. Hang on. Let me just do this. I'll just do this. Sorry about that. Cause I, I'm going to type as I go. Just yeah. so and that everybody in the comments, uh, hang in there. Um, we, we want to get, you know, Rob, the chance to say everything he wants to say, well, comments a little later, I'm not ignoring you, but I don't want to interrupt the flow here because we don't want to miss anything. So again, this just, you'll see in, in real time here, what I'm kind of, uh, what I'm doing here, I'm just going to add some, as we talk so that we have some context. Um, okay. So let me just do this guy. So I'm just going to make some quick bullet points. It won't be as super fancy or anything to that effect, but it's just going to be some, some points here. So one of the things before we get, you have a load and you're doing these loads and you're trying to figure out the marketplace. Well, first off, you need to, I guess, identify what you're doing as a carrier. Are you going to be, are you focused on a region that you want to work in only? Are you focused on a lane that you want to work on? Or are you willing to just, you want to just work for a certain broker and jump around to where they want to go. So you have to answer that question for yourself, right? But part of that would be is when you talk to these carriers, you want to promote yourself. So how are you promoting yourself? What does your, right now, if someone looked up your carrier that you, whether you're an owner operator for, so if you're leased onto a carrier, what does, what are they doing for you to promote your, to promote, to promote them as a carrier? And you're one of those drivers. If there's 15 owner operators or 20 or five, it doesn't matter. But what are they doing? Or if you own your own authority, what are you doing? So first off, let's start with phones. Okay. So I suggest most people, if you're a one carrier, you're going to be working off of uh, your cell phone, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same token, I'm also a believer that in terms of safety, if you're the driver, the safety manager, the accounts payable, accounts receivable, you have all these things. So you are responsible for all this, but if you're also the driver, you have to drive. And well, I mean, we're coming to the end of it, but for the last four months, five months, we've been in winter. And I'm a believer that the driver should be focused on driving when he's focused on driving, when he stops the truck. And if he's going to do some safety work, he's doing his safety work and he's doing his accounting. He's doing his, you know, you have to have your focus, right? Right. So how you can help promote yourself to make, again, it's all, it is a perception thing, but why not? Who cares? Make yourself bigger than you are in a sense, not that you're misleading it, but just make yourself professional. And how you can do that is a simple tool like a VoIP system. And I'll give you an example of two that I would suggest. There's others out there and you can use this as a guideline to start. I'm not promoted. I'm not paid for any of these. My, I have experience with the one, very extensive experience. I've been using it for years for myself. And the other one is simple to use as well. But VoIP, Ring Central, or Grasshopper. Okay. So if you were to use your screen, uh, Adam, and just yeah. open up a Google page and type up Grasshopper. Grasshopper okay. VoIP. Grasshopper VoIP. Let me get this here. I'll share this. Just, okay. Give me one second. I'll get this yep. up. Shared as a screen. I'll have to pull yours down for just a yeah, second. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. So just if you don't go to the ad one, obviously. Remember, a little pro tip for less technology people. When you do searches, you see at the top where it says sponsored, sponsored. Right. Never touch those. Always yep. go lower. We'll go right here. Yep. Just go right there. I'm just going to, we'll just spend. So right there, that picture right there tells it all. Okay. So what happens with the VoIP? You can make it like a desktop. I have a desktop because I work it on at my, my office. But if you're not, like if you're a driver and you're always in the fly, you can sign up to VoIP. You still have your cell phone. You mm -hmm. still have your cell phone, but you can create a, a, a grasshopper account and you see how it's got the picture of a phone. It's got a yep. picture of a laptop. It's a, it's a, it's just called a soft phone. That's a soft phone. So it's an app on your phone that's called for it. So you can ma actually make calls from the app and you can make calls from your laptops. So if you're sitting at a truck stop and you have pull out your laptop, you can plug in your headset and actually make phone calls. Here's the other benefit. When you're on that, uh, both of those, you can send a fax message 
You can send a text, like I send text messages to drivers all the time, but I'm not typing on my phone. I'm typing on my keyboard. Right. So it's a huge advantage. And then the next advantage is this. So you can either port a call or you can create a new number for your business. But then what's nice about it is this is the part that's that makes the difference. When people call, you can say, welcome to ABC Trucking. Press one for dispatch, press two for safety, press three for accounting. And then if it's dispatch, you can make a message. You can just say, um, all our drivers are currently driving. Please leave a message or send a text message if this is urgent and we'll respond to you when we stop next. Say that, well, you know, you can make a message. So the point is so that when someone calls you, you don't just say, leave a message, bleep, and that's it. Explain, like if you're driving, then make it, if you don't have someone else to help cover your phones, set your voicemail up so that when people hit one for dispatch or broker, then you can say, if this is a, if you have a question for tracking, send an email here, right? Or text message. Do you intend it to or not? Well, and I, just, actually, I didn't even intend this, it. but I just sorry, it. my audio keeps bugging out here. Sorry. That's oh, okay. And you can either send a text message, uh, then you can put them, you know, in that little when they reach, like you've reached, you know, Rob with ABC Trucking. I'm currently driving at the moment. Um, I'll be stopping. You know, uh, just leave it. If you have a tracking question, send me a text message. Uh, if this is non-urgent, send me an email and I'll respond to you in 24 hours. Like if you're busy, just make it. And then that's the next step is so you can just the whole thing that makes the difference between the good and the bad. The basic thing that we can do to improve ourselves fundamentally is communication. It's 2023. Yes. Figure out who your audience is because there's some companies out there, trucking companies included, shippers included that are still operating super old computer systems they're not high tech they don't have a lot of the stuff but then there's other companies that are super high tech like you can barely reach someone on the phone so you have to learn how to communicate to them saying you know that's you have to be adaptable so is it text message instagram messaging is it who knows it could be anything there's so many ways to communicate whatsapp uh there's a lot of different ways in which you can communicate right then that's another tool you could use whatsapp as a tool to help you you know, but I like these because what this does, it you can actually record calls if you wanted to. You can say this call has been held for recording, or you can, but you can set up a tree. And if you, the, and the beauty is you start small on this, but as you grow, you can ex add extensions and so forth and build this phone system that looks like you're a corporation, but it's just, you know, even if it's just you and you hired one more driver, you can, or if you have an accounting person, you can have so that, and then you can have it so that when it rings to the one number, like you can have, like I have mine set up. So when it rings during the daytime and at five o'clock, all calls automatically, the system knows my, my business hours are eight to five or whatever times you set. Then at five o'clock, it automatically rings to my thing. And then you can also have it if you don't want to miss a call. If you really don't want to miss a call, like say you have option one is dispatch, two is sales, three is safety and four is accounting. So if you get a sales call, you can have it set up so that if you know that if someone presses two for sales, you really don't want to miss that. And let's say you're a solo, you know, you own your own truck, maybe your wife is there and you can say, you know what, when someone press sales, I just need you to answer as ABC trucking, get their details so that you have that personal touch. And then that your, your wife can, or your spouse can text you saying, Hey, someone called, they want a quote for the following. Okay. My next fuel stop, my next 30 minute break. When I stop, I'll get back to them. Mm -hmm. and, and even, even though I don't have time, I'm just going to quickly call them saying, hey, I got some stuff on the go today, or you don't have to give them all just saying, look, I'm super busy. Would it, again, back to my sales tip, would it be okay if I get you this quote by tomorrow morning? Yeah, that's no problem. I would say, well, actually, we really need it today because we have a bid. Okay, what can you do to accommodate? If you think it's business you really need, then you do that. But if you ask for permission, can I get, if I get you by tomorrow morning, would that be fair? Great. And you just confirm their email address. And then you can do the quote, or if it's a broker asking for a load for a quote, then you, you know, but the point is you, you, so you can have this VoIP system set up. So when it rings, you can choose it that on one, like dispatch, it'll automatically go to voicemail Two, you can have it ring, say four times to your phone. And then after that, or you can actually have it set up so that it automatically <clears throat> rings to three phone calls at once. And the first person to pick it up gets it, so to speak. So you can have it like literally come into a sales office and, you know, do it all at once. So it's your choice. You have to take time to learn it and how it's going to work for your business. But I just highly encourage having it. It's a simple way. Uh, it, it, look at the play, the pricing plans. Again, I don't work for Grasshopper. I'm not, I have never you know done nothing with them. But if you click on pricing on the top right there, so 
yeah, the basic plan is uh, for solo twenty eight bucks a month. Okay. Right, forty six yeah. gets a part gets more, and then Ring Central. Ring Central is another strong contender in this market as well because, and they got a whole Ring Central university. You can spend hours learning how to improve it. It has internal yeah. message. This also has it that if you have other dispatchers or carriers, you can actually communicate and it gives you a nice history. You can actually see how many calls you make, all this kind of history. You can see if you've called the shipper three times. If you need proof of that, you can pull those reports. If you hired a salesperson in your business and you want to see how many phone calls they're making, you can pull those kind of reports how many yeah. phone calls they're actually making in times and so forth. So the point is, is that take your communication, starting with your phone to the next level. Yeah. Paul uh, and I use a uh, ring central pretty, there, there's a, so, you're, and you're right. There's a lot you can do with it. There's a lot. There's a, <laughs> there is a lot you can, you can set up yeah. all kinds of stuff. And also with ring, like with ring central, which is like I use Telus in Canada, but it's basically hosted on the ring central in one click, I can send you a link and I can invite a thousand people to a conference call. Yep. And I can host a, I can host a video call, like if I want to do a conference call with hundreds of people all at once in a matter of seconds, and I can record that and then play it back to other, and send that recording back to other people. You can share. You got white screens. Like just it's it's enormous, but it's going to help you. Okay. Okay. So the next one is your LinkedIn. Okay. So the key to the LinkedIn, we won't. You could do a whole thing about LinkedIn, but. LinkedIn is like the Facebook, but LinkedIn is the business version of that. Is it the be all end all? No. But if you want to, again, the whole thing about the promotion of your carrier, the thing I, again, I bring back to is consistency. Your phone system's professional. They look, they see a LinkedIn bio, you're professional. If you have a simple web page that matches to what you're saying on your LinkedIn bio, it's professional. You could create a YouTube channel specific to your business. You're not doing no funky things. It's just a couple videos, even if it has no views. But the idea is that if you want it, you can put it on the bottom of your signature. You can either use Loom as a way to promote, make videos for your business, or you could do it as YouTube. It doesn't matter. But having the consistent messaging, but the key to bio, the, the only two things I will tell you about the consistency, uh, the key to LinkedIn is this. If you like, you know how there's your, your own name, right? So Rob CDN, right? My right. profile on LinkedIn is me. But if you worked for other companies, the key, and if you're working for a certain company now, so if you're one truck operator, you have to create a company profile in LinkedIn. Because now once you create a company profile, if you have a logo, you you once you create that company profile, now you go back to your personal page and you type in that company, it links it. Because otherwise, when you're on LinkedIn, if you look at people's previous history and it has a little brown box beside it, well, that means when you click on it, there's no company profile. So when you can, it doesn't take much. You make your profile saying, okay, I'm currently the, uh, you know, the, the owner operator or the owner or the CEO of ABC trucking. You were previously, maybe you worked at this company as a, you know, as a long haul driver for five years at this company. I was a day cab driver at this company. And prior to that, I worked at this factory or worked in this business or this industry or whatever you did. Right. But you got your, basically LinkedIn is like a public resume form. Right. So when you see your history, someone can look at your profile and see who you are and your, who your connections are a little bit. But the idea is it just creates it. But if the key here is with LinkedIn is you need uh, the key is on the LinkedIn bio. I'll just type on key is a company page. Okay, then link to personal profile. Okay. So that that company page is a totally separate independent page. Right. So like as, your company, okay. you have to create a company. If you have a logo, you create that company saying, hey, we're uh, a drive-on carrier servicing Wisconsin or all 48 states or whatever you want to promote yourself as. I'm not. We're not going to get into those fine details. But the point is, if you work for a company right now where you're, so, you're leased onto and you work for XYZ Trucking and you go to LinkedIn and there's no XYZ Trucking, your first thing to do tomorrow morning is you have to call the owner and saying, you need to create a profile on LinkedIn where they put their company name, all their information about who they are, their history, but their little bio, basically. And if there's a company logo that you guys have, put, upload that image. Then once that's done, you go back to your personal page as an owner operator to show your current that you're an owner operator for XYZ Trucking. 
And then you just type that when you put in your history, like what, you know, when you put the history saying what you're doing, well, I started in 2006 with this carrier or 2012 or 2020, but 2020 to current, you put the name of the, as you start typing the company, their profile will then pop up and you can use that. So now it links it to the company page. Okay. It just takes it that it just makes it look more professional. Right. And that's again, if you're, when you're, if you're going to become a lease operator, or an owner operator, you're going to go buy a truck and you're going to sign on to someone. Before you sign on, do all these steps. Go to their LinkedIn page. Go to their website. Look at social media. What kind of history can you see? Can you see consistency before you sign up? Try before you buy, basically. Okay. Um, and and you may say, okay, I'm going to lease onto a company and this, and they find my freight. What is this? What does it matter? Why should I even do this? Well, you're laying the groundwork for the for your future. Start now. Lay, lay the groundwork now. So if in five years you decide to go get your own authority, you hit the ground running yeah. rather than starting from scratch. And you already got this stuff figured out. I'm just looking up here. And I'm going to give you an, a perfect, perfect example. The best example I could ever tell you. Uh, let me just see. I just have to find the guy. Give me a second here. I just yeah. have to do it. Uh, I'm here. I'm just on another screen just so I can look up yep. uh, the guy's website. And then I'm going to share with you because I just can't give, because he's a solo operator, just like all hundreds of thousands of other ones. He's a Canadian guy, but uh, his website is the best example I could tell you. One second here. Mm-hmm. Everybody, uh, make sure you're out there subscribing to Rob's channel. This is... You're going to get a lot more of this uh, CDN Freight Broker. Uh, go, just go to at CDN Freight Broker 3708 to go right to his channel. If uh, Let me see if I can put the link in the chat here again. Nope, that's the StreamYard link. Let me uh, just get the direct link to his channel here. My problem is that with the whole YouTube world is I'm busy. Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah, started this and, and I haven't had enough time. I don't always have enough time to get enough content out there. No, I, I relate uh, to that. But, you know, over time, over time. Yeah. Right. And people will help make that happen for you. Yeah. Uh, so. OK, so give me a second here. I'm having a struggle. I just I've, I've hit a brain fart here and I just need to find what I'm uh, looking for. I'll just grab some comments here. Um, Naga Express, Rob, clearly a solid professional broker. You're absolutely right. That's the thing, too. When you, if, uh, see people talking about freight brokers online, even if they claim to be a freight broker. Okay, do they just have a freight brokerage? Are they actively moving freight? Or do they just have a freight broker authority? Right? There's, I, I'm a broker. I have a brokerage. I've moved about 80 loads. That is nothing compared to what Rob has moved. And Hey, he's the one you want to hear from, not me. And there's a lot of people out there with, oh, I have a brokerage. Well, have you moved any freight? Oh, it doesn't cost anything to have a brokerage. You, know, you got hundred, you know, hundred bucks a month for the for the bond. Okay, well, you're obviously not operational. There's a big difference between operational and just having it, right? So this is a he's a high volume, highly experienced freight broker. But I, I put a caveat to that because a lot of people say, well, hey, I want to connect with you, Rob, and I want to get some freight. But the reality is, is that a lot of the freight I do is is fairly specialized and right. I do and I'm all over yeah. the place. I do U.S. to Canada, Canada, U.S., but a lot of it is it's unique. Like I have I've had the same I've had many customers for over 10 years, a lot of customers right. for over 10 years. And so and the, some of these customers are not always the high volume they just are consistent like they'll uh, you know some of the customers i'm at the point where what they do is they just email the supplier they've put a po in and they just say we've elected rob uh and then they know they notify me when the order is the supplier emails me when the order is ready and then we go from there so it's right. you know it's just that that's the how knowledge it, I'm, I'm you know obviously don't come to rob you know unless you have the can handle the kind of freight he has which is mostly specialized but Oh, there it for is. In, for information, that's that's where you want to go. Okay, so now I'm getting it here. Hang on, I finally figured it out. Sorry, I had a brain fart. I had to look in my TMS.
Uh, anyway, I'll finish this question. Any comments on the proliferation of unethical brokers and how the infestation of unethical brokers is damaging to the broker industry? Yeah, we can come back to that uh, a okay. little later. So Naga. here's where I want you to go. If you can open up a page. Okay. Go to Go Bananas. It's co sorry, it's not Go Bananas. It's Cool Bananas. C-O-O-L? Yep. Coolbananas.ca. I cannot say enough. If you want... As a so I can give you two carriers okay, to look got, at, but it got blocked for some reason. Let me it, uh I can do it on my end if I need to. For some reason it's blocking it on my end. I don't know if it's the dot CA or yeah, it might be. Uh, it just might be because that's a kind of a Canadian deal there, right? So uh let's see, will it allow me to if I go like this? Oh, let's see if it... can I change how do I change which screen I'm sharing here? Oh, that's why I just have to go like this. Share. There it is. There we go. So take a look at this guy. So welcome to Cool Bananas. My name is Don Ferris. I've been a proudly moving customers freight for over 35 years without incident. Originally from Ontario, I moved to Alberta in 2010 in an attempt to provide better quality for my life and my, my life for my family. The name Cool Bananas from a guide, a tour guide in Africa. I always wanted a company that had nothing to do with what I was doing. Simply put, I wanted a conversation starter and Cool Bananas was born. So far, the name has been more than expected. Most passerbys on the highway wave, take pictures of the name on the side of the truck, smile and give me a thumbs up. And our customers love it, making people smile and make my day. Our strength in the industry is direct reflection of our core values, which are customer relationships, integrity, professional work ethics, respect and trust. Without those, you're just another trucking company or broker. Our rates reflect our value we place on our customer's product. We treat your shipment as if it's our, we're our own. Currently, the demand for our services stretches to any point from British Columbia to Ontario inclusive. We can handle most types of deck work. We just added a few a new Landall trailer to our fleet. Feel free to contact me and here it is. So he took his truck, put the nice cool logo. That's where he's getting people stopped. The guy was, it's absolutely professional. He's got pictures of his Landall, right? Hmm. So cool bananas. So some more pictures there. There's a little pic, couple, couple other pictures in here of him. Just some stuff that he's done. Some stuff on fishing. So he's got a link here for industry news. So it just links you to, to these couple links. That's it there. Contact us is right there. Real simple. Terms and conditions. He's he's listed his terms and conditions, right? Terms of net 30 days, charge 2% for overdue accounts, etc. And he's one truck operator. That's pretty neat. So how many people can replicate this? Is this look complicated? I, I, I got to say I had a cooler website, but I took it down because of YouTube. <laughs> My website was banging. It was? Yeah, but because of YouTube, I had to take it down. Oh, so <laughs> I may build a new one, but it's, I believe that because it, it depends how many trucks you're running and what you're running. I'll give you, since I'm here, take a look at this. You, I'm going to show you another example. So this carrier is based in Canada. Okay. They're moto freight. So what do they do? They're a quasi LTL carrier. So they're not like a YRC or old dominion. They do LTL. So they have local trucks pick up and deliver, but their billing isn't done like with NMFCs, National Motor Freight Classifications and Freight Classes. It's typically pallet spaces. Then they consolidate and move it across the borders. Different stuff. They have domestic LTL, but this is the part I want to just show. See, like they're pretty simple. Like they make it fun. Like where the hell is my shipment? They're blunt, <laughs> right? Like they kind of have fun with it. And I get, but this is where I want to show you. Take a look at this. They created... How do you do this? For free on Google Maps, you can create a network to show where you service. So see our departure schedules. So come down here. They made a schedule showing, you know, so if you pick up in LA, the reason I know this is I'm booking a load with them that picks up on, I've booked it, it'll pick up on Monday, depart LA on Tuesday, and it's going to deliver to Vancouver on Friday. And they use Rose Rocket as their tool of TMS, fantastic TMS, 
right? If you pick up in BC, where is it going? It's got different schedules. Is it perfect? But they kind of give you ranges. But the point is, so when you click on this link here now, look what happens. You can do this. You have to just spend the time. We, we can't see what you're doing there. <clears throat> oh, you you, oh, okay. Hang on. Uh, share this instead. There we go. Did you see the Moto one or no? No. Oh, okay. So here I'll go to share this this tab instead. So this okay. is this is Moto. So I'll just go back to the beginning. Sorry about that. Is so they're basically a carrier. They got how they do it is they have local trucks doing pickup and deliveries. They fill yeah. up fifty threes and then they use outside carriers such as yourself to hook up to the power only. They may have a couple of their own drivers, but most of the time they just rebroker out like get other car carriers, independent carriers to pick up from these various terminals and make the deliveries. And then they drop them at their warehouses and then they unload them and use the local trucks. So they're, they don't have a lot of assets for line haul. <clears throat> they just contract, they, they broker it out, but like they go here, where the hell's my freight? I want to talk to a human, right? They're actually showing, they're making fun of it, but they, they want, like they're making it simple, right? right? So <clears throat> take a look at this. So departure schedules, this is where you click on departures. And we're going to show this in a second, but they made a list. So if you're in Los Angeles, because I'm picking up on Monday, I have a load that they're going to pick up for me. It's an LTL. They're going to pick it up in, near LA and they'll pick, it'll, they'll pick it up Monday. It'll depart Los Angeles on the line hall departing Tuesday. And if you pick it up before, as long as it's picked up before noon on Tuesday, it'll get on the line hall leaving Tuesday night. And then it'll arrive into to Vancouver for delivery either Friday or Monday, provided no customs delays. So they have a basic outline. It's not guaranteed service, but take a look at this now. So when I click on this page, share this instead. So all of you can do this. It's right here. It says, this is an interactive map. You can create this by going to Google. And you can actually, you have to put some kind of addresses, but see like it shows when you, if you zoom into a certain city, mm -hmm. you can you can put points. So if you have a network, you have to put addresses, you, whether you, you have to play with it a little bit, but you can create a map showing the areas that you service. If you want to show that, okay, I'm in Wisconsin and I want to service the Midwest and Illinois, that's where I focus. You can send this to brokers. So when brokers come to your website, you can add this link to your website and then you show your service areas. And like here, it gives a note. Uh, when I click on, see like stop off terminals, service points. So if I click on Houston, a little note comes up. Uh, Houston service point. It gives me the address to their terminal. Wow, that's really neat. So is it perfect or nothing? But it kind of gives me like I can see that if I want to use them, am I going to call them for a load to Philadelphia? No, because they don't show no map there, <laughs> right? They show Montreal, they show Toronto. Dallas is a big hub. And they go down, see, these are all stop off points. You can just click on it. Orlando, Florida. This is a partnered service point for Moto. There's mm -hmm. no way we could service every point in North America alone. We still manage the process from start to finish, vet all our partners through thoroughly. However, in this area, freight moves in part or in full length with a partner carrier. So they're rebrokering it out. Right. But they and have ways that they're allowed to do it, but they've created themselves a network. It's man, up front. Uh, this is a lot of value. So, you know, guys watching this with one truck, I guarantee you 99.9% .9 of us will never do this. No. You want to be part of the 0.1% and look like a, you know, put some legitimacy to your business. So imagine wow. if I come back to here and on here, he doesn't say he, he lists it. He just says he services anything in between BC and Ontario. So he made it simple, but I could put a hyperlink there that takes you to the moto page. Right. right? And you could, and then within here, well, no, yeah, you could make the, you can put the Google map in here that, cause it's a simple thing to do. Once you create the Google, you just go to, uh, Google my map, like you go to my maps on the website and then mm -hmm. it says you can, you can literally create this for free. It's, it's in here. It's right here. I'll show it to you. This link, learn how you just click on When you go on here, this moto, you just click on this little link here and it'll oh, take not, you to, the, we're not seeing it. Uh, no, it, what, it didn't open oh, up oh, here. Oh, oh, I got okay. it. Sorry. I got to, I got to click here and then I'll show this screen. Oh, so okay. create or open a map. So I will just do this copy and can I, can I put comments? I'll put it in. I don't know if I can comment through here. So I will just put it there and I put it in the private. You can copy and paste it into the thing and 
you can put it as a link. Gotcha. Getting it. Okay. So the idea is if you can come in here, show this, and you can even, if you wanted to, because if you have a, if you make your website, depending on how many trucks you have, you could put a tab, where is my truck? You could just say currently heading to Texas. You don't have to give, you don't want to necessarily give away your stuff, but at least you can say, where's your fleet? If you have three trucks, it's up, you know, I'm not saying you have to do it, but I'm just saying, how can you communicate? So on the bottom of your signature, you could have a, you could have a thing that says, where is, where's our fleet? Let me ask and, you this. Yep. Okay. So is there any, hmm, this might be beyond. So being, if you have three, four trucks out running, right? Mm -hmm. Could I create a link? This would probably have to be through my ELD that the below my signature line, uh, put a thing. Where are my trucks? Question mark. Click here where they could click and go mm -hmm. to something like a Google maps and see the location of all my different trucks and say, Oh, this guy's well, yeah, here. through your you'd have to have that through your EODs. Yeah. Right. That's okay. that but you could you would you could basically if you had a chart, some kind of chart that you could just update in your website and that links over. Okay. okay. The other way that so let's go back to the presentation. Uh I just have to do this guy and then present share screen. Guys, I'm telling you, subs uh, subscribe to his channel here. This is uh, this people pay good money. You're getting you're getting a a, a, a whole course here for free from from Rob. So um, at least he could do is subscribe to his channel, give him some support. This is worth a lot of money. Now I put I'm putting this here so people can see it. But coolbanaz.ca is an example or solo barrier. Okay, or for complex, look at www.canida.com, okay? So if you wanna go to your, see if you can do it on your end, canida.com. Okay. You don't have to even put the W, just canida, C-A-N-E-D-A.com. Okay, let me share this here. Dang it. I got entirely too many tabs open here. <laughs> All right. Okay. So Canada Transport. So you think, oh, it's Canada Transport. Just like everything else, you don't know until you don't know, <laughs> until you look. Just like okay. brokers, you assume a broker this, assume a broker that. Well, scroll down to the uh, first off, go down to the very bottom of the page right to the very bottom. Okay. So the key point I want to show here, what is Canada Transport? A division of the Mullen Group. The Mullen Group. That's a big company, isn't it? They're huge. They're buying out companies left and right, and no one's seeing it on the media. They're the silent giant. Hmm. <laughs> so in a moment, we'll come there, and I'm going to show you how big the Mullen Group is and what they did strategically. So go up here. So if you click on uh, Freight Tools, And so scroll down just a little bit right where you are on this page, insurance and authorities. If anyone is ever considering going to become a cross-border carrier, look no further. If you can replicate, duplicate this carrier. So they have their Alberta Safety, Alberta Safety BC, Certificate of Insurance, CORE, which is an Alberta thing for like safety, Freight Forwarders Authorities, uh, their insurance here, CSA, now that's Partners in Protection, which is PIP, uh, go up again now. And let's look at, is there a button? This is your permit for Canada. So let's click on the freight tools. Okay, we're there. Okay, scroll down a little bit more. Maybe it's further down their US stuff. So this is our Canadian authorities. Oh, there we go. There we go. So here we go. So. Permits for the U.S. They got their CT PAT, which is for carrying uh, high security loads or that you're certified. FAST certificate. They got their hazmat certificate because in Canada, you to be a hazmat carrier, the carrier has no authorities. You don't have to be like you could be in Canada moving dangerous goods loads. All that matters is that the employees are trained and the staff are trained. That's it. What? 
not the carrier in the United States. So me as a broker, our brokerage, in order for me to move dangerous goods, I have to be dangerous goods certified in both Canada and United States CFR 49. They won't let me dispatch unless I prove to that. And they actually have things that will block me. They will block you out in our system that will not let you unless you have a certificate and the, our brokerage office clicks a button to allow you to book. Okay. Same thing with LTL, less than truckload. Our brokerage, it's so LTL, think, oh, it's just LTL. Dealing with LTL is very, very complex where you're dealing with national motor freight classifications, freight classes, liabilities, all kinds of accessorial charges, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of steps involved there. We have a course. You have to take the course when you sign up to our brokerage and you have to pass with minimum 85%. Otherwise, you cannot dispatch LTL. So they have a lot of standards in place. So you look at it here. So they're standard here for, they have their California hazmat permit. They got their broker authority for the US. They've got uh, Colorado hazmat. Here's their DS uh, hazmat for uh, DOT overall, because they need both, right? You have to have the carrier and they got their MSC 90 endorsement. So if you want to be a dual carrier, look no further than look at Kenita. So now let's go back down to the very bottom of the page. Click okay. on that Mullen group. It's not clickable here. Oh, okay, there they, we go. There we go. I got it. Yeah. Pain train. Okay. So you might have to change your screen to share because I don't think we're seeing it. Oops. Oh, it didn't. Up I'm watching one at a time here. Uh, So look under, might be about us, our, our corporate, our mission. Wait, go to about, uh, click, highlight above us, history, values. Okay, we'll go to the next one with company resources, board of directors. Okay. Go to the next one. Somewhere it's going to say, our, what, uh, what's this one here say? What is it? Oh, subs oh, cl no, click on subsidiaries. Okay. Just click on that there, and then you can look at, see if it clicks to bring you the, over yeah, go to overview. So there you go. So wow. Mullen Group owns all, they kept, when they take them over, they don't change everything to Mullen Group. I work with all these carriers. Guardwine is out of Manitoba, and they service Manitoba. They do truckload. They, if you look at their website, you think, oh, they're a big, huge trucking company, but they're owned by Mullen Group, Grimshaw. Big trucking company, Jay's Transports out of Saskatchewan. They own so, so much. Banster Transport Services, Northeast, like Alberta and Northern BC. Like they just own so much. But yet, so that's the point. When you're looking at a broker, paying, in, paying transportation, like it, when you're looking at a care, when you look at a broker, so when you're about to say this broker is gouging this, look at the scope, the size that you're working with. Who are you working with? Is it me? I'm an agent for a mid-sized brokerage or is it just my brokers? Is it Rob, Rob CDN freight brokerage that it's just me, myself and I, right? It makes a big difference. Or am I working for a freight brokerage where I'm a division of a bigger, like who is, who owns Coyote? UPS. Right. And did that, were they originally, was Coyote originally UPS owned? No, nope. I don't believe so. No, no. Uh, take a look at um, an example of another one is uh a uh is it abs arc best yeah so arc best is owned by um they got bought out they by, bought they bought molo didn't they no um who's like who am i thinking of not who's the ltl carrier that's the one that oh, oh abf is the ltl carrier ABF. oh yeah so abf is the started out ArcBest was separate because, see, Panther, ABF Freight bought Panther. It's all intermined now. So ArcBest, ABF Freight, they're all connected. Okay. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, right? That it used to be because, uh, yeah, Panther Expedite has now changed. Yeah. So ABF, so you go to, if you type in ArcBest, just type type in ARCB.com. A -A ARCB. Dot com and the title page shows it all there you go 
Panther, Arc Best, and ABF Freight. Hmm. Right. So, and Panther is a, you know, I used to use them quite a bit because you know what they have? They do expedite. As you know, there's, there used to be a couple that had their, they have the fancy words like a nice sleepers and expedite. And their transportation system is excellent. Like if you get them on a head haul, you're paying more money, but they have a, they have a backhaul office. And so I used to, sometimes I need them. I needed them because they would have sometimes dangerous goods drivers in certain areas. And I, it was like a Friday afternoon pickup last minute. So I'd see if the drivers are around and certain areas, I kind of got to know, Hey, they would have backhaul drivers there. And I'd learn that technique and to show you something else here. Hang on one second here. Hang on. Yeah. Uh oh, he's bringing out the the big guns now. The big book. So, when I started out and I said I studied, I studied to be not just a broker, but I wanted to understand the carriers. So, one of the things I found, this is many years ago, and the guy's taking his website down, but it was called by Joe Bernard. I don't know if you remember the guy, but it was demand strategies for the high, high, yeah, demand strategies for the high income earning trucker. Hmm, never heard of that. Well, this, see this nice little booklet here? Look how thick the book is. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's, and that's double sided. This is double sided. Wow. He actually had a website. He taught because he worked for Panther, he was an owner operator for Panther. The whole book here, this whole book, he talked about the trucking market. He has everything in here. He would talk about how he leveraged the demand strategies, right? This is, so this came out 2009. And it says here, it would say, do you know just how much your equipment is needed? It all depends on the market needs for the trucks the area, even the time of day. Many of these things also depend on the overall health of the market. However, I experienced in any average market, average meaning not particularly strong or weak for an extended period of time, the demand for trucks to move freight from many areas in an average market was so high that shippers and brokers were willing to move their freight at three to four times the average market price. What am I saying? They were willing to pay me over $4 a mile on the same freight they just paid other carriers or others less informed truckers, a dollar fifty to mile to run. Wait a minute, how can they pay three to four times the average price if the the average price is a dollar fifty per mile? The truth is, average price market price only exists in the heads of those willing to accept those that lower rates. It wasn't because the trucker didn't need to get more or try to get more. Try to get more. Sometimes they believe uh, what they were told by the brokers, which is him bashing brokers basically. But that was not enough money on the load. They're bright enough to get their own authority, and then then they that they and then they know that a lot of brokers are lying. But that's because they usually don't know how to follow the market, how their competition are leveraging the market to their advantage. They get weak and cave in the low prices. Many of the brokers have convinced many truckers that the market prices are less than what truckers need to run truck properly. Guess what? Brokers don't set the, determine the rate. Truckers set the the market rate usually out of ignorance, lack of discipline, and impatience. Many truckers d just don't have a realistic idea of what their rate really needs to be. Still, other truckers still have resolved to buying ridiculously services that are supposed to tell them what their rate is supposed to be in a given area. If the trucker uses the same technology as brokers, he can usually closely watch how is marketed in the strong, strong areas and weak areas. They should know what their total expenses and what what they need to make based on an investment of time and responsibility and how realistically the factor their family into the rate. So he goes on and on and he bashes brokers a bit, but he also has. So I downloaded and bought this book from him because I wanted to see. And he talked about how he leveraged last minute, you know, running and so forth. So okay, that was, you know, I mean, and he has, he had a whole website where you can, <clears throat> he explained how he did his lease operator. <clears throat> and he, like he talked about company drivers and back calls, right. And he talks about all the strategies in there. And when was, and, and that, that little article I read, would you say that was written in 2023? <laughs> it very well could have been, couldn't it? And this was written in 2009. Right. So, so has, everything what, old is new again. Exactly. So the point was, is that I I guess I'd be, I, I'm kind of a student to the industry. I'm constantly learning and trying to 
uh, get myself but going. So let, let me add this caveat. All right. You're smart enough to know that you got to learn both sides. And that book you write, you, you read right there was not written for you. That was written for us. But you read it because you bother to care to understand the people that you do business with, right? Yes. And there was a guy that kudos to him. He was his name was uh, I will look it up here. <laughs> But his name was there was there was a website that I used to help me identify rates and learn the rate market. And his name was Charlie. He was a carrier. He created a website called fairtrans.com. I don't think it's around anymore, but basically you would go in there and you could put your expenses in. And then he helped you. He uploaded the fuel surcharges on a regular basis. It was just like his little version of a thing to help the marketplace better understand that their cost. I took all those into consideration, right? Like my little profit calculators that I use, that's, yeah, like that's the kind of stuff that I do, I guess, to be a little bit different. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm not just doing one thing. I look at so many different avenues. That's mm -hmm. the, that's the whole gist of it here. And I'll just open up a little tab just to kind of show, uh, let me go here. I'm kind of getting on a side tangent, but again, just to show that there's so many things to study and learn. And okay. Okay. So here, I'll open up this guy. So I'm going to show you, I'm pulling back the cable, the table here. I'm really pulling back the table and I'm going to share, stop here. Present. So again, you, how fast, when we talk about, well, what can you do to help? How can you become better? How can you make more money as a carrier, as a broker, and so forth in this industry? And I talk about, in my mind, technology. How good are you at creating? This is a Google Doc, but I actually created it in Excel. I started it in Excel, but I put it to Google Doc because I've uh, shared this with some people. But how fast can you create formulas? Do you understand what, what if formulas? How can you, can you make complex formulas? So here's an example of a load. So this load is 600 miles. The deadhead was 100, so there's 700 miles. I used five miles per gallon. So it's 100. The calculator, I just have to put the, you know, I can change this. I can make this six. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to up it to 117. But I'm going to take the worst case. I'm going to go five miles to the gallon. So the average cost of fuel in the lane, say it's 550. I'll, I'll bump that right now to say 650, okay? The okay. worst case scenario cost of fuel is nine hundred and ten dollars in this load now. So let's say because I built this many many years ago. At that time, a lot of company drivers were getting paid twenty five fifty bucks a stop. So let's say as you're paying your driver, your I call you as the carrier. You've got a you've got a carrier a driver. Well, you're paying your driver twenty five bucks for each of his pickups, no matter what. So it comes out of that. So it's fifty bucks for there. Maybe this is up to thirty five now. Okay, so seventy. So rate per mile on the deadhead. This was a year, you know, a while ago. So let's say that's I'm getting you a buck fifty for your deadhead there. So it's 150 rate right per mile on the loaded. Let's say that was well, it's down market. So let's say that's uh, you know, maybe it's a buck eighty five, and maybe you know, maybe let's say it's right now the market's kind of soft. So let's say I, I budget that I can get you a buck a mile for your deadhead, hundred bucks, and the rate per mile is uh, let's just call it two bucks. Or a buck seventy-five, right? Or make it two bucks, just to oh, keep it simple. You brokers just keep bringing that right down, don't you? I'll go. I'll go. I'll go two twenty-five <laughs> mile, two twenty-five a mile, not twenty-two fifty, but let's go two twenty-five a mile. Okay, so that's thirteen fifty. So I'm saying, okay, so now I'm currently at uh, twenty. That's thirteen fifty. Adding the fuel, so the subtotals at twenty-four. This is I'm putting my mind as a as a carrier, not okay. as a broker. My mind when I calculate this is I'm thinking percentage to driver. So how would a carrier think? That's how I look at the load. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm at 2430 bucks on this load. 10% carrier profit because you need to make some money as a carrier. So it's 243 bucks. So it's 2673. The driver is making 80%. The carrier is making his 20. So the average is 305, works out to 382 all miles. So you're saying on 700 miles, 600 miles, that's a pretty darn good rate overall because I've, I've budgeted fuel but fuel might be high there at 650. That's a little high. I would say what, you know, 550, right? Or you guys right. are paying about five bucks a mile, right? Five bucks a gallon right now. So give or take, yeah. So now see how it, it adjusted everything. So I'm saying that probably the carrier is going to want taken away. Uh, this does not account for the supply demand factor, all of that. This is just as a carrier, 
running 600 miles, ideally you would want something along the lines of uh, 2,400 bucks, give or take at least. And that's covering your cost. Now let's say this went down to say 8%. Okay. Because it's tight market or something. So again, somewhere's around 2,400 bucks. So 2,400 divided by 600 on the loaded miles is four bucks a mile. That's going to be pretty darn high. I don't know if I can sell that to the customer. Right. But I'm just saying that I'm using a, there's different ways. And then the race, this rate calculator on cents per mile to the driver. So it's just taking, I made this formula. So it's, see, it's updating. If I update six, it updates it over here. If I make this 450 a gallon, it updates it over here, right? Mm -hmm. I updated the rate per drop to say 25, right? Cause I'm, I remember I'm adding a bunch of stuff in here that may or may not apply. And if let's say the carrier is getting uh, 80 cents a mile here, you know, maybe this is maybe on deadhead, he's getting 50 cents. Okay. So that changes there and so forth. So the whole point is I'm using a calculator to come up with a number. Okay. Like, and, it, and then over here, if I took this load, uh, let's say this load was seven, 600 miles. The way I also look at it, how I look at a rate is I say, okay, if I figure out what I think the carrier wants or what the market's at, then I look at the realistic load. Because when we look at all these load boards and we see these proposed averages posted, you have to look at that with a grain of salt. Meaning those are like, you have five shippers all on the same street going to the same Ma you know, from a major hub right. to a major hub. That's what you, and they're, they're averages. I look at the reality of the load because if it's 80 miles outside of, or say it's 60 miles outside of the town, the next suburb away, right. well, that's 120 miles I have to build in because that driver has to go out and then, or I'll run it. I'll show, you know, here's the major hub, but there's no drivers where that town is. So where's the nearest town that they have to pick up? So then I look, okay, if it's 50 miles, okay, so there's 50 miles dead. They have to go 50 miles to go from that center. Ch chances are I have to get a truck from this area. They have to drive the 50 miles to pick it up. Now I run the miles back to where the consignee is going. And if the consignee has, <clears throat> it's a small town, 85 miles or 100 miles, well, I look at where is the next major area that the truck is likely going to get their next load? How many miles away is that? And I built that into the equation. So that when I present to the customer, I don't just give an email to a quote to a customer saying, here's, okay, I want to rate for a 53 drive in from ABC, from point A to point B, Chicago to Texas, right? I don't just say, okay, that's going to be 2000 bucks, $1,800. I break it down. I'd list because I make sure I quote, not just to quote, I quote to execute. Mm -hmm. If I make a quote today, because the customer is bidding on a job, when they call me in a month saying, hey, that job is a go, I go back to that quote. All my notes are there, the carriers I spoke to, my plans, how I estimated it, so that I can execute it. I call the carriers. If I call the carrier because I wanted to confirm, say, hey, um, if it's carrier I know, I'll call them and say, I'm working on this lane. Would you agree that this is about the price? They're saying, actually, Rob, no, you should be here. Or actually, you know what? We've been seeing it's coming down. You better you know, adjust. And then I put my conditions, like subject to truck availability. Things that, you know, how much loading time I allowed to and, and unloading time. And I put all those conditions, the rate per hour after that for the quote. So when the customer calls me to execute it, I've got my plan and I'm planned to execute. And they take all these factors in. And if something changes, I go back to the customer saying, hey, it's been six weeks. The market's changed. The carriers are planning. They're not going to be, I can do it with the carriers I plan, but they're not there that week. They're there the week after. They're like, oh, we can wait if they say no. We need it now. I say, okay, well, I can do it, but it's going to cost this much. And then I let the customer make that decision. Okay. So Pe people are asking if, if you share any of these spreadsheets. I'll say I'll say this. If you do, go ahead and share them on, on your channel. Uh, yeah. The people should come over to your channel and get them. So everybody subscribe to CDN Freight Broker, but at CDN Freight Broker 3708 will take you right to his channel. What I've subscribe. done is I did have a group... Um, yeah, I had a way that I did it. I don't know if I can share links to there, but I, what I did was I think I needed their email address and I added them to it. Okay. okay. And again, this is a very generic, it's well, it, right. it works for me. I have several, several different ones. And there's ones that you and I can talk about off air yeah. um, that could be beneficial. I, again, I would say put the time <clears> in to try to learn to do this for yourself because then you can change it and modify it. And plus it's just a good skill for you to have. Well, 
like there's some things I can get into, but I, I just won't today, I think. But basically, you can okay. take a spreadsheet to analyze your business a bit when you're making decisions, right? When you're looking at stuff, because it's kind of like this. When you say, well, if I told you <clears throat> broker one made um, did 1.3 million in sales. Okay. Broker two did 1.3 million in sales. And broker three did 1.3 million. Broker one did 1,650 loads to get that 1.3. Broker two did 600 loads to get the 1.3. And broker three did 400 loads. So that's no different than carrier one did right. 500,000 doing 200 loads. Broker two did 500,000 doing you know, uh, 100 loads. And broker three did same 500,000, but he only did a load a week. So he did 45 in the year and still made the same amount of money because he was doing super long haul, getting paid right. big bucks. Or flatbed versus van or right. versus but that, right. So diverse. <clears throat> and, and and also too, if you took my business and if you looked at my percentage, you would say I'm gouging the marketplace, my average profit. Because you'd look at the top line and you'd say, well, CDN is, is uh, gouging because he's over 20%. But then you have to analyze my business and see that I'm doing a whole bunch of LTLs that I'm making $40, $50 on. So like, it's kind of like this. If you put, <clears throat> if you took, uh, let's see if I can, how can I do it here? I don't know if I can do it on this one, but if, if you, I'll just do it like this. Yeah, I can, I can actually create a little thing here. So <clears throat> let's go say, I, say I, I'm booking a truck for 400. That's the carrier. And here's the customer rate. So I charge the customer 500. Okay. Let's say profit and percentage okay. equals this. Okay, so so oh, take a look at this. So and I'll, here, I'll just do this. I'll just expand these to make it a little bit bigger. Listen, hold on. Stop one second. Uh, Iron Mike Sharp, we're not doing that today. This guy's come here to provide a lot of helpful information to everybody. Um, so... Let's let's not uh, be like no, that today. Iron Sharp doesn't. He's missing the point. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm not like no. This. There's. Th that's this another is, channel. This. Th what that is 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 some other channel. That is not mine. You're more than welcome to watch. I have no problem with you. But please be respectful. There's a lot of other people in here. That place a lot of value on this information. Rob was kind enough to give us his time, and uh, you know, please respect that. So, so go ahead, Rob. All I'm trying to show is right here. If you look at this and said <clears throat> so. I have a load, I pay the carrier 400, I bill the customer 500, you're making a hundred bucks. But if I said, yeah, I got a load, I'm, uh, I paid the carrier 400 and I made 25%, but I had another load that I paid the carrier 500 I'm making 20%. See, the perception is he's making so much money, but there's still a hundred dollars each. Yeah, percentages are percentages. I right, mean, you know, they, like, they, the, like if, I take a, if I took a load like this, I do sometimes loads where they're $150. And if I build the customer 200, right? Oh, actually, I'll just copy. I'll change this to say 150 here, 200. So I'm making 33%. So you say, oh, I'm making 33%. I'm making $50. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's perception. So, right. So back to the, I will switch over here. We kind of got off track here. But the point yeah. was, I was just trying to show everyone has to have their own stick of business, how you're going to you know, analyze your business. And there's so many ways to do that through TMSs and so forth. But back to promoting the carrier. On my uh, yeah, I, think I got it. <clears throat> so we talked about Cool Bananas. We talked about Kenita Moto Transport. Okay, uh, what else can you do? Right? What else can you do to promote yourself? Well, you got your website. 
and you got your your uh, promote your carrier <clears throat> um, email campaign. Okay, talked about this before. There's others out there, but this one is so simple, so easy. Mailchimp dots dot com. Okay, and you're welcome to go. But basically what MailChimp does, sure, you could go ahead and create an email list with a bunch of people's names on there and promote it out. But if you make a mistake and don't hide the email addresses, you're potentially exposing a list to... Yeah, people do that all the time. So also we have in Canada, and I believe in the United States as well, there's what we call anti-spam laws, right? So what MailChimp does, when you sign up to MailChimp for free... Again, I'm not affiliated. I don't make no money from any of these sites here. They're just tools I use. So, and there's other ones out there that are similar, but I can just tell you MailChimp, why? Because it's my experience, my knowledge that I know it works. The free version allows you to have up to 1,500 contacts, which mm -hmm. I'm sure most of us don't have that. You can send like 1,000 emails a month. So when you go to MailChimp, you simply sign up, you put your username and password. It starts out as a blank. It'll say, create a campaign. So you can create some different, you can make a simple template where it says, truck, call it truck availability. And this is how you could tie it to your website and you can tie it to your email. So you create the simple thing saying truck availability, like ABC trucks available. Okay. And then you can create the template to how you want it. You could put a picture of your trucks. You can include your logo, your signatures, but you can just say, here's my trucks. And then you can just have you have the basic template in place with the signature of the pictures and then you just put the chart or type in where your trucks are at if you have one truck you say you could if it's just yourself you can say you know good day i'll be in texas on tuesday march the 14th let me know if you have any availability and looking to get into the midwest or i'm looking to get south to florida whatever the case is right now how you get so that's you could create the basic template again with any technology test retest i must emphasize this test retest what i mean by that is when you do something with technology with tmss anything you're doing web creating websites before you make it public look at it yourself so what's uh, it email what the, it to yourself send it right to so you can put yourself and you can put say you have another email address a separate your wife's email address send it out because remember depending on your audience if they have corporate emails Sometimes it will get bounced and so forth. So you got to just check how that shows up. You just want to see how it visualizes and also look at it, how it looks on the phone, right? Because most people look at their emails on the phone. So within that, you can have the little thing just saying, hey, my truck's going to be in Texas, or you can make a big long list. I get these daily. And I have a file folder called truck availability. And then if I think, oh, I remember seeing a carrier said they're going to have a truck there. I look at those and I, and I forward that email to show I'm paying attention to that. And then I can... I'll say, hey, is your truck going to be here? And we'd start chatting and so forth if I can use them. But I can tell you that at the beginning, you're going to say, well, CDN Freight Broker was wrong. It did nothing for us. You're right. Probably the first year, you're going to get no traction. I had a carrier I knew that started it with nothing. And guess what? After two years, almost all his loads were getting booked that way. I am booking a significant portion of my freight through methods like this. We... I. And a load board is a, a last resort. Right. And thank you for this because I'm the guy that takes the time in my email to make a, a contact list and it's a pain in the butt and, you know, I have a whole over a hundred people on it and it's, it's just get to be a pain. So but I think I'm going to switch over to doing it this way. But what I can tell you, the tip is again, if you get a hundred people on there and study your audience, take the minute, this, this, this will dif differentiate yourself. If you have 100 people on there and some of them are reefer brokers and some mm -hmm. of them are dry van brokers, but if you have a reefer broker that will never, ever have a dry van load for you, it's really simple because you can, what you, how it works is this. You add your contacts. There's two ways you do it. You manually do it where you just put their first name and their email address. You don't have to put their phone numbers. You can, right? There's also in there a CSV file that you download, which is essentially an Excel file. You can fill in the forms and then you just click upload and then it takes all that data and it inserts them as contacts. So you could do it two ways, the manual way or the other way. This is taken the current contacts you have. We'll talk in a second about how to add new contacts, but if you have a list of people you're currently have connections, like all the brokers you've ever, if you've booked in the last two years with loads of brokers, just 
get their email addresses and go on there. Mm -hmm. And the beauty is, yes, you're adding in their email address. If they don't like it, the at the bottom, it says unsubscribe. That's the beauty of it because it keeps you compliant for anti-spam. If they don't want to see it, uh, it'll tell you, it will tell you this person unsubscribed. And it tells you how many people clicked on your thing and how many, it actually will tell you how many, if you send out a campaign, which is like an email blast, it will actually tell you how many people uh, blast, like viewed it and how many people repeated to re view it. Okay. And if there's any bounced emails, it will tell you that too, in case your email address goes out. So here's the, how to think about it this way as a tree, you make your list of contacts one through 100 or whatever it is. And then you can click, if you made, say you had four, I would say, say you had truck availability dry vans, truck availability reefers, because say you have both. And if you do flatbed, if you have all three, then make a separate one for flatbed. Then make the fourth one general announcements. So you have four categories. Now what you do is you go to each contact that you're adding manually to start with, and you select which ones are most pertinent to them. Everyone will be under the general because the general would be like, Hey, we've added a new truck to our fleet, welcoming so-and-so. So that's a good one to put for everyone. But if you're like, you want to wish them a happy Thanksgiving, you want to wish them a September day long weekend, or let's say, Adam, I sent you that email about cargo theft and you wanted to put that out there. Some general mm -hmm. tips that by consistently putting knowledge out to your, your, these connections, they're showing that you're, vest, you're, you're trying to promote your vested in their business and their knowledge. So you can target the audience by selecting which campaigns those people receive. So you can create them. And then from there, they'll only receive it. And then new people, here's the beauty. At the bottom of your email signature, you can put a link. Uh, check my, you want to find my truck availability? Subscribe here. So they can click the link. It opens up and it'll say, which email address, which email campaigns would you like to join? All, or so they can choose the ones they want. And MailChimp does all this for you. And it's free. The, then, then there's the next level. Constant Contact does it, but they don't offer much for the free version. And you have to, if you want to pay more, you can. And there's another, there's a few other services out there, but you can look up like Mailchimp alternatives and, ser and search that out. Okay. Right. But Mailchimp will allow you to. So this way, in addition to the load boards, when you know that if you're one truck or two truck operator, or ten trucks, if you know like yourself, if you have your own authority or you're even if you're an owner operator picking your own freight then you can go out and do this, right? Because you're allowed to go in the load board. So there's no reason you can't build your own database of your connections of people that you book freight with. And then say, I'm delivering in Chicago. I'm delivering in Seattle. I'm delivering wherever I'm going to deliver. I'm going to be in this area this day. At the beginning, you get nothing. But guess what? And then you, you can almost, if you have that single, um, want to find out more about, my, about this company, click here for the website. Have your LinkedIn bio in that email signature that's connected, right? Need a quote? Click the button here. Because again, uh, another another way to promote yourself, I'll add in here, is um, corporate email. Um, Google work or uh, office 365 domain. And there's many. But get a but get a domain, okay? Meaning, get away from the Gmails and the Yahoo's, the Outlook.com. Pay the bucks; it doesn't cost much. If you don't want to, if you're not tech tech savvy, the simplest thing you could do, and I'll get the link here. Give me a second here, and I'll put it in the Google Work. Hope this will work here. I'm not sure if it's going to be specific to Canada, but. Basically, I will put it here in the private chat. And there's others to do it, but then the, then the idea is you could create um, like three different emails. One is dispatch at, you could make a specific one for your name, you know, rob at abctrucking.com, dispatch at abctrucking.com, uh, quotes or sales at, and then admin could be your accounting related stuff or AR yep. or something like that. But again, and those can help you when you're running your show, what it does, you think, well, I don't need all that. Maybe not. Maybe will, not someday, but it looks so, professional. But if you're going to only ever stay as one carrier, maybe you don't need all that. Then just have the one email dispatch at, and just say, if you need a quote, click here, 
to send, send me like email me at dispatch at right. If you, if you know, you're never going to add fleet, you're just going to stay by yourself. That's fair. But regardless, have a domain email address. But if you're ever thinking, yep, I'm by myself, but my goal is to get, I want to get two, three, four owner operators, build this up because it allows you that when you're focused, because now here's the next step. When you create your emails, if you're a, another pro tip, if you're a driver, as if you're driving the truck, as well as all the other steps, my suggestion is utilize the out of office alert. Like, you know, you have, you have vacation alerts. Well, utilize the out of office alert. And the reason for that is that if you're on the road trucking and you can't get to your emails, just put a response. Like if you know you're going to be busy for two days, let's say you're delivering somewhere where there's bad cell service, things of this nature, just go out and utilize. I'll add this one here. Um, utilize out of office alert. This way, when, when someone sends you an email, like an invoice or things of this nature, you can have an out of office alert that says, I'm currently on the road. Doesn't mean, hey, it could be a salesperson. I'm in meetings all day. You could say I'm in meetings. I'm on the road. You say I'm, I'm on the road and I'll respond to you by in 24 hours, right? If you don't, if you don't, then you can add, if I don't respond in 24 hours, please call me because that means maybe the email bounced, went to my spam folders, things of that nature, right? Mm -hmm. And then, so it's just, a, it's, it's a way to have that personal touch that they don't just, it's an email sent, you assume it's good, but if you know you're not looking at the emails, periodically, like as often as you, as you'd like to, this way it helps you bring focus to your business. When you're doing one specific thing, you can weed out certain things. Right. And, and I encourage that, you know, like if you're, if you're a, an owner operator for a carrier, I ho hopefully you would have an email specific for like dealing with the brokers and the dispatch and all that stuff. And then I like, like even myself as an agent, I have my corporate broker email. Then I have a separate email that I keep for my, I'm a, I'm a sole proprietor as an agent, just like real estate agent, right? You sign up with Remax, you join an office. So there's someone has the franchise Remax and he's got six real estate agents. They're all independent real estate agents operating under that Remax office. So I like to keep one email address specific for all my, the financing that I'm spending as me, myself, like my book, my book of business that I'm spending money on everything that any invoices go there. Then I got my brokerage stuff as my brokerage. So I keep them as very succinct and tidy that way. All right. Great. So, uh, but utilize the office alert to, to, you know, uh, streamline communication is this way you could just, you know, you can make it complex or, you, you know, you can make it so that, Hey, I won't be checking this email for 24 hours. If it's urgent, send me a text message. And, and then at least lets them know that you're not ignoring them. And then you can even, and makes it look corporate. You can say your emails reached our servers. Please note, I'm currently on the road and I'll respond within 24 hours. If this is urgent, then it, it's just a way that they know they see it because, and you can set those out of office alerts so that if someone's sending you multiple emails, they only receive the first time. It won't be every email. You just have to look at your settings, mm -hmm. but you don't, but you don't have to you know, do that. So again, if you're only running, like for example, as a broker, if all you do is you found some connections, maybe you were a driver or whatever you did, but you got to the point that you have either an agent, like you're like me, like you're an agent for a broker and the broker does all kinds of stuff. But, but your book of business is you have three customers that move rolls of paper and boxes. Like that's all you do is that cardboard stuff, like something simple like that. And you have three customers, they send you loads of lists that you book for them. And some of them are bids, some of them are your freight but that's all you're doing. Three customers, those commodities, and it's only drive and freight. You never do anything else. That is so different than being a broker, managing reefer freight, managing flatbeds and so forth, intermodals. Like, so your complexity of your book of business that you're selling as a broker or as a carrier, the modes that you're doing, like I think it was Sandman, he had, he used to have a, uh, maybe he still does or not, but he had a, a van and a flatbed. He would do both back and forth, right? So if you're one truck operator and you decide to have two or three trailers, then that changes, right? If you're in a position where, hey, I got one truck and I got this connection to a broker or to a shipper, and I have a local cartage company that while I'm on the road going to 500 or 600 miles down the road, and I get the email that there's another load, I just email my cartage company. They go hook up to my trailer. They drop it for me. 
And then when I come back, I take that, I drop an empty and I pick up the loaded and I got this reload cycle going on. So everything is, I, there's nothing, we're not painting a picture that's going to, this isn't going to work for everyone. Right. It's just some tips that may apply to certain people in certain, certain cir circumstances. You have to pick and choose what you want. And they're all adaptable. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this is a pretty darn good start that if you did all these things here and I'll put loom.com as promoting as again, right. You can use it for promotion, thanking you, thanking, like if you wanted to, when you, here's another tip. So if you created a loom.com, loom.com account, create a, say it's Labor Day weekend, Thanksgiving, and you want just to give a thanks video, make it two minutes long, stand in front of your camera or whatever, save it, put a title, you know, um, Thanksgiving message from ABC Trucking. You click on the link, copy the link, go to your MailChimp.com. You go to your announcements, uh, the general announcements campaign, create copy or create new from that or duplicate that campaign. And then you have all the people that you want in there. And then you just say, want a short video from the president of ABC Trucking wishing you a thanks, happy Thanksgiving. And then click the link. They'll see the link and then they can get the message. And the other part that I forgot to tell, to circle back is once you get the MailChimp going or constant contact, whatever one you use, what you do is at the bottom of your mail signature, and if you have a web page or in LinkedIn, if you want, MailChimp will create a, a spot where it says sign up. And you just copy that link, paste it into your signature. So then it says sign up, you know, check my truck, uh, receive alerts of truck availability, click here. And then when it clicks there to sign up, the person will put their first name, maybe a first and last name, and then their email address. And then it, it will show the various campaigns. Like if you have, if like I said, if you only have one, just saying truck availability, general announcements, because if you're only just doing dry vans, just, just keep it truck availability and dry vans. But if you have a reefer and a dry van, put dry van availability, reefer availability, general announcements, and that person then can choose one, two, or three, or just one. Right. Okay. And then they're signed up. You didn't have to do anything. They just, they, the link is there. So it, and then you can just tell them on the phone, Hey, uh, if you want to get some alerts on when my truck's available, click the link. And it's on the bottom of my, it's also on the bottom of your email signature that you send out. So again, you have to just take the moment and map yourself out, but this is just some ideas. I'm not saying it's a silver, silver bullet. It doesn't have to cost you a lot. It could cost you a lot. It doesn't have to, because you know, the VoIP again, it's just a professional thing. It doesn't cost that much. Uh, the LinkedIn bio is free. You don't have to pay the premium versions for LinkedIn. Just do the basics there. A web page, you can go with the simple one page tool. And in fact, one product that a lot of people don't talk about, and it it's not the best or the be all end all, but it does give you some access to some things. And a lot of the stuff is kind of, you have to weed through it, but it's called truckingplanet.com. Have you ever gone on there? I, I, I have actually, yes. So truckingplanet.com has that tool where there's an email mass blaster where you can put your truck availability and you can choose that it will blast out an email to ver all the brokers in that network. But what's nice about it, it's kind of like a LinkedIn, fa Facebook, but you could create like they have a reefer, like they have a whole bunch of different in there, but you could kind of create your own little network if you wanted to, so to speak, between brokers and you can, you know, try to utilize some of the tools there to help you stream. Some, it has some of the stuff, the mail mask. They even have a template for creating simple web pages. He offers that. Ron, that uh, Ron's the guy that runs it. I've been using it for years. I'm not saying it, I haven't moved no freight from it, but it, the idea of it, the, the, the structure of it is kind of there. And also, you know, within you, leverage your load boards. If you don't like working with certain brokers, like, so some of the boards have it that you can block certain people and you can favorite others. So again, taking, we have the buttons of the dashboard of the semi, all the software that you use, take the moment to know what these buttons, you, just identify what each button does. And then just say to yourself, will this help my business? Yes or no. If it does, then I need to know more about this. If it doesn't, and I can tell you that DAT, truck stop, all these different load boards, one, two, three, and so forth, all offer webinars, right? right? That will teach you stuff. Now, one other side note is if you want to, if you're really frustrated with brokers and you're really getting fed up and all this stuff, then if you're 
maybe a little bit of, um, there's a little bit of a, a van freight, but majority flatbed. Okay. So if you're a flatbed carrier, sorry, I'm just trying to move over to here. There we go. If you're a flatbed carrier, have you ever heard of Treadplex? I have not. And let me just find it myself here. This is the one. Oh, um. Oh, sorry. It's called Veritred. 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 Okay. So you can go ahead and open that link. Type up Veritred. V e r i t r e a d. Okay. Let me share this here. Ah, dang it. Again, I'm going to share something here to help those that might be super frustrated with the broker world. Okay. You can come sign up for free. Click on carriers. And it's generally, there'll be a little bit of drive-in freight, but 99% of it is flatbed. So this is your ability, your opportunity. If you're a flatbed hauler and you're mad at the brokers, come here. And you can look up their loads, sign up for free. And, but guess what? Now you're working directly with shippers. So but, is this Veritred, what is this like a marketplace here? Is this a direct shipper? What, what is this? Well, it's kind of, it's like shippers can post their, so if generally 90% of this stuff is going to be Richard Brother Freight and auction okay. freight and a similar stuff like that. But essentially you come in here and you can post, you can see your available freight right? When you sign up and shippers get to no headaches, no hassles. They promote it as, but guess what? Again, no before you buy. So you can put on the sea, you can put the cities and States and you can see what's happening here. And the benefit is the pro is that, so you can see the loads. Oh, wow. Now, but guess what? All you get to do is bid. And I have a person that used this, tried it, and they would email for questions like, hey, this or that. And guess what they found? No one ever replied to them. The shippers never replied with answers to those questions. Okay. So there's a lot of freight. And you can avoid the broker. But just know that you're basically submitting a number. Yeah. So this is just a transactional thing. This isn't a... You might... You, maybe there'll be a few shippers. It's a, But I'm not saying it's the be-all, end-all. It's just one other. If you're a flatbed, heavy-haul person... It is a potential avenue to help work through sh shippers. But a lot of these are going to be one-off loads, like how repeatable they are. I'm not sure. It might be just some guys buying, but there's there's freight. There's freight here. But you just have to know that you may or may not always get answers. See, here's a power only. Looks like a van, right? Needs to yeah. get hauled. So I'm not saying it's a be-all, end-all. I'm just saying that it's a tool that connects carriers and shippers through a, through a load board. Interesting. Without, without brokers being involved. So I'm just, it's, I can't, again, uh, I'm not going to say it's, you're going to make the big bucks out of that. Maybe you will, but you have to try it and test it again, test, retest, test, retest, read through everything, learn about it, call Veritred if you need to, or email them with questions and understand how everything works there. But it's just, it's a tool. It's a pure, simple tool. Okay. So I think we've talked a fair bit about there. So I'll try to speed up so we can get cruising. So this will turn into too long. Yeah. What, whatever you have time for. I, yeah. We'll... So one hit wonder um, for you or the, as the carrier or the broker, or have you listened to the full album? Have you shown your full album to the broker? Has the broker shown their full album? So that's my analogy. I'll use an example. Do you remember back in the nineties? House of Pain, Jump. Huh, how could I forget? Right. Name me three other songs from House of Pain's album. Ten years ago, I could have done this. Right. <laughs> I My wore that album right. out. <laughs> I, right. I know, but the point is, you remember Jump. Right. But we don't remember the rest. No, we do not. Now, if we probably thought harder, I bet you we could come up with a few more Kiss songs. Oh, yeah. Then we would Jump. Right. Absolutely. Even though, so the point is, 
if you're a one hit wonder for the broker or is the broker a one hit wonder for you? So when we enter the world, again, the whole focus of this talk today is about how carriers can work with brokers better, right? That's what the focus is. There's so much in logistics, but we're narrowing it down to how to better improve your chances of making more money on the freight market or consistent money, however you want to look at that, but making more money and having a better experience versus being frustrated. So when you start with a broker, you call up a broker, you see a load posted and you reach out to this broker, you're trying it, right? Whether mm-hmm. they're fat, whether they're factorable, that's the first step. A lot of, a lot of carriers will look at that. Are they factorable? Yes or no. Cause if they're not, sometimes you might say that's a showstopper for me. Others will say, no, I want to learn more is like a lot of brokers don't post their rates. So you have to call and discuss that. So the question is you as yourself need to set up your own standards as to how you evaluate brokers. Okay. Meaning when I call them, how do they sound? Do they, if I ask them questions, are they forthcoming with the details? Right? Yeah. I see you got this dry van load going from Chattanooga, Tennessee, going up to uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Yep. It's a uh, pallets or it's this or that. Like they're pretty forthcoming. Where, hey, do you have, if the first questions are like, Hey, do you have logistics e-tracks in your truck? Yeah. How many straps do you have? Four. Well, okay. Well, we need eight. Do you think you can get four more? And you know, like they're, they're, they haven't even talked about the rate, mm-hmm. but they're, they're, they're qualifying you to tell you information. So that's, you know, that's you come up with that. But the idea is, so you work with this broker once you try them out. Now, all of a sudden you're, you're like, that was pretty good. You know what? Hey, like our, our system, for example, we talk about how some of the, we always get mad that some of the brokers out there give false addresses, right? They, they post the city here, but really the load's picking up 50 or 80 miles away. Right. I will tell you, actually, I've had in Canada, we use load link, which is the sister company to DAT. It's a whole convoluted thing, but I've had loads posted where carriers will call me and saying, Hey, Rob, are you getting any calls in this load? And I'll say, actually, no, not a lot. They said, yeah, because your city's post. Like, I know you, so that's why I called you, but you should post it from here. I've had carriers tell me you should post it from here <laughs> because the way the algorithms work, and I even have some cities I've gone on to different places, the cities don't pop up as a location to, to use. So I have to use the nearest city. And then I put in the notes where the actual pickup saying, you know, if they see this, I'll say, actual pickup city is here because it just wouldn't show. So the point is that you, you kind of have to evaluate the carriers yourself. How was your experience? And you were like, I like this, this brokerage was great. They said it was a good experience. Okay. Now you do a second load. Did you get the same experience? Because maybe you worked with a different agent. Mm -hmm. Did you get one agent was great. The next agent you're like, well, it was okay. Not as good as the first one, but it was okay. But because now you have to start to sit down and saying, Okay. So let me look at this. So now what is this broker? How big are they? Do they have, where are they located? So their head office is here. Okay. How big are they? How many offices do they have? What scope, what, you know, what are they doing? And then seeing how that fits. And then you can say, because often we know that some of these brokers are hard to reach, but again, using loom.com, some of these tools, the point is, is you have to lay out to yourself. Okay. How do they get, how do they pay? I'm currently using factoring, but what's their payment terms? How much freight do they have? I like using them. What is their credit worthiness? Do you have the tools to evaluate that? So then if all of a sudden you start meeting up with this, that's when you can say, hey, to the broker, could we have a Zoom call? Or where's their head office? Are you going to be driving by their head office that you could stop in and see them, sit down with them? And if you could have a Zoom call where you have a little two-page presentation about your carrier and you want to learn more about them, how long they've been around, you're, you're connecting. You're seeing saying, here's my capacities. Here's my capabilities. What do you have? How can we work together more? If you really like them dive. So basically the one hit wonder is that one load that was right. great, but you might've been great too. And they really like you. So you did a load for them and they were so impressed with the service, the communication, then they call you, but you're never have a truck in that area again, right? Because you happen to take a load to that area. You were chasing the freight. Mm-hmm. And so, but then when you show the full album of what you're doing and they show your full album, can you guys, will the record play on your player, so to speak? And that's the, that, you know, however you can close that gap, setting up, you're promoting yourself, showing them yourself or, and if they won't, again, 
in typical sales calls, it's about 12 times before you can get a chance to even get quotes, things of this nature with the, with the shipper. So you have to be persistent. Polite persistence wears down resistance is my old saying. Polite persistence wears down resistance. So if a broker you believe has good freight, but they're not the easiest to deal with, well, then you have to find ways to communicate to them. That's, that's the reality. So that's kind of the gist of it. Once you work with a broker, that's a, you, you can take one load from a broker that's a try before you buy, meaning you're going to invest into them, right? Are you willing to partner with them? Like understanding, okay, what do you need? What do you need that's going to make me better for you? Like I have to sign up to this app. Am I willing to sign up to their app? How do I get access? Because by deepening that relationship, that's what's going to get you. And if you've done a few loads with them and you're showing them that consistency of execution, your standard of execution that meets their standards. And that starts with, with your carrier. You need to establish what are your standards? What do you convey to the marketplace that your the execution levels that you bring to the marketplace? And then that will then lead you to get to those points where you're getting emailed loads that are not posted on the load board. And I think that's what you talk about. You get How do you get? That's the whole point. You use the brokers to get to the real freight. The load board yes. is the start. But the real freight is not on the load boards. Yeah, if, if you never go any further than the, what's on the load board, it's it's a tough go. And Especially click and go apps are like great. This. Like having a brokerage. So here's the key with the click and goes, I would say, because I don't have a ton of experience how to do them. But I would say because of the fact that often with click and goes, some of them have bids, some of them don't. And they're convenient. The fact that on a Sunday, if you had a, you're supposed to pick up and that load got canceled, you can go on a, a certain apps and get a load on a Sunday may not be the best rate, but you can get a load at least when there's hardly anyone open. So it's kind of a convenience. So the key to, I think the carriers that are doing the click and goals where you can't, all you're doing is, yeah, you can bid up the rate, but you're not really selling yourself, right? You don't get a chance to communicate. So that's where the key is. You really have to, those kind of carriers that have those click and go apps, you really need to dive into their terms and conditions. You really need to read their broker agreements and then try to set up a meeting with them where you can actually talk to them, like do a couple loads. So they see that you're doing working with them. And then through that saying, Hey, is there a way we can have a 10 minute? Can I just get five minutes of your time? If they're super busy. So that's how you start just real simple, five minutes, just to go talk some ideas. I had some ideas with you and just, you know, I'm sure they're going to give that to you, right? It, it might take a few times to set up coordinate the times, but if you just keep asking, then you can talk to them, figure out stuff so that when you're working on the bid side, that they, uh, they have a better understanding. They might, share some insights some best ways to do things and so forth. But I'm not saying there's a right or wrong way, an easy way, but you have to work at it. That's the point. You kind of have to work at it and you got to take each situation you're working with and what your goals are. What are your goals as a carrier? And you're trying to find brokers that are going to help align with your goals. And you know, that again, alliance, you're, 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 and that this is no different than a shipper, right? right? If you're going to a shipper thinking that just you're going to the shipper just to get money, that's fine. You can do that. There's no problems, but that's not the long-term business goals, right? right. Everyone, it's a relationship deal. So, okay. Um, and this is where we get to basically schedule the meeting. You know, are you comfortable? If you're not, again, you can go on YouTube. You can go to the zoom.com. There's many ways. If you have the ring central account, you can create a, you can invite them to there. They have a whole video conference tool there. They, there's a phone conference call. Um, that if you want to invite four, you can say, Hey, you can have four people from different offices all joining on this conference call where we're going to talk. You can do that, or you can do it in per on zoom, or you can go meet them in person. And you know, that that's a question you have to say to yourself, how like this past week, how many in-depth conversations did you have with a broker or a shipper this week, this past week? How many mm -hmm. people did you actually get into like where you really dove deep into your relationships, where you better under you came out of a five minute call, better understanding the needs of that broker, the needs of that person that's going to help you move that ad advance that relationship to the next level than just a rate on a load board. Right. Right. That's every week you got to have, you got to have those goals. But, and then when you do a meeting, the key to meetings in 2023 is, oh, let's just schedule a meeting. People don't like that. If you email them asking for a meeting, put the agenda. Like, hey, I've done five loads with you, three of them out of the same shipper, and I got some ideas that may help you improve your relationship with that shipper, right? Sales is all about helping the people. Then through that, once you gain their, their trust, 
they'll then want to know how you're helping them. But if you show them that you're focused on them, so put two or three bullet points, what you specifically want to talk about saying, I got five minutes. Because a lot of companies nowadays, they have a seven minute rule. If you can't have a meeting and cover your topics in seven minutes, then you shouldn't have it. The meeting is too complex. It's you need to do something like, but you can almost pre-qualify by first off asking for a meeting and give a quick topics. And then if they reply back, you can add a little extra and then set up the meeting time and so forth. So, so that's basically, you just have to try to set up a meeting and to meet with them and, and uh, focus and then taking notes as you do that. <clears throat> and then the next we get into what issues do you see? What solutions can you suggest? And here's a crazy, crazy, people are going <clears> to <throat> bash me on this idea. But <clears throat> let's say you're at a particular shipper and you've done this load with a broker 10 times. Okay. And there's a certain come in and it's a tight corner and you're always popping the curb and you've watched 10 other trucks all pop in the curb, right? In that one spot, they always have to go over the curb to get into this place or backing up. There's something you're always hitting a curb. So imagine if this, you went to the broker and saying, look, here's the problem I see is I've, and you can take loom video to show it. <clears throat> and now you're not calling to complain. You're saying, hey, would your shipper be willing to, and I'd be willing to do the following because you've given me this business. I called a company. So you had a loom video and if you took a measurement and you called the local concrete company and they said, how much would it cost to cut out this 10 foot by five foot section and pave it? And they give you a quote, 2000 bucks. So you phone the broker <clears throat> saying, here's what's happening. I'm getting this issue with the pop in the curb and I'm seeing others. Here's pictures to prove it. Would you be willing to split? <clears throat> Maybe your customer would as well. Sorry, let me just grab some water. <clears throat> would you be willing to split the cost? Maybe three ways. It's 2000 bucks. And then I could do that over. You can deduct it from me for the next five loads we do in that lane. Take a hundred bucks off. Whatever price we still have to negotiate, whatever I negotiate, then man, it's a hundred bucks off for the next five loads. And that'd be my contribution to it. You figure it out with your customer and let's get this, see if they would approve because maybe they don't own the building, but I'm just talking crazy ideas, but that's a, that's a, an alliance, something to help. That's going to solve a problem rather than just complaining. Hey, I'm always popping the curb there. Okay. Well, what's the, what's the solution? Interesting. Right. Maybe it's a check-in procedure. It's a, you know what, we're having problems with this, like whatever you're observing, because sometimes that can help. <clears throat> you can share with the broker. I've get carriers that tell me all the time. They'll call me saying, Hey Rob, did you know the following? And I'm like, yes, I do. Or no, I didn't. And then I bring it up, you know, then I can address it with the shipper. And sometimes the shippers won't change so that it is what it is. Right. But then I use that knowledge and I pre-educate the carriers coming in. Hey, when you come in, always do the following or turn this direction. Otherwise you're, you're blindsiding or whatever the case is. Right. So whatever you can do to help show that you're, you're not going to backstab the broker. You're actually saying, Hey, I want, I want to keep working with you. Could we do the following or suggest the following or this change or whatever the case is just, you know, I'm not saying they're, they're, are they going to make the change right away? Maybe not, but it doesn't hurt. You just have okay. to ask politely and then see where they go from there. So, so, I mean, again, <clears throat> we can go on and on. Um, but the way to get start to start it is to quit talking and begin doing. Yeah, I, I like that one for sure. So, so that's kind of the, <clears throat> that was the little bit of the, I, I hope we kind of covered, but we, we covered an awful lot. <laughs> we did. And I probably didn't solve all the answers, but no, yeah, but I, I tell you but, what, if, if a guy works on half of the things that we talked about, like I said, I, in the beginning, it's <clears throat> all about competitive advantage. Right. There, and yes, it's not about us all getting together and shutting down the country for anything less than so many dollars a mile. It's been tried. It doesn't work. It's never going to work. We can't even agree on freaking a, a piece of pie at a truck stop. Yep. It's this business. It's about business strategies. Um, right now you need a competitive advantage. Well, and again, if you don't have a TMS, I highly encourage them. But if you don't want to use a TMS, have some way that, when you go to facilities, make notes for yourself, the procedures, because like hypothetically, if you're thinking that, yeah, I may eventually dispatch a driver or two and there's this certain facility. So what, if, if you want to share it to the broker, you can, 
but you could also keep that as knowledge for yourself. If the broker told you one thing, but you got there and the actual process is slightly different, you could help the broker or you could just say, I'm going to make notes myself. So when I come to this warehouse, I know the procedures. Mm -hmm. And you, when you, every time you go there, you look up, oh yeah, I remember this place. And it reminds you if you haven't been there for a while. And that's how you build consistency. That you knew that, oh, last time I went to this wrong spot or whatever the case is, or, or they told you the following that, hey, you should have done this next time or whatever that, whatever you can do to make your life easy. Because whatever you can do to repeat, make it repeatable <clears throat> for like, if you do go behind, you know, you're going to go beyond the broker and get your own freight. You have to be able to learn the shipper's procedures and convey that because uh, you have to be able to convey that to the if you're going to re if you're going to create a brokerage and do it yourself and broker it out you have to convey that and, and you and then you have to perform yeah like performing is a whole you can get the freight you can get the right money you can get but then you got to perform and can you perform yeah and you're on a short leash very much so very much so so right. it's you know, we talked, to, and you remember I mentioned about the, that cool bananas brought up the story of um, integrity. Well, there's an article I have, integrity, without it, nothing else matters. And it's, it, it's, it's basically summarizes about my word is my word. Mm -hmm. And you have to read the article twice. Otherwise, it, it doesn't sink in. And I got this from a course I took when I joined my brokerage. They were offering this advanced sales course through a, a consultant. And it was about 10 weeks where we met and went through stuff. And it was pretty, pretty darn cool. That article was ridiculously powerful. <laughs> ridiculously powerful. Um, yeah, like it's, yeah, it's uh, ridiculously powerful on there. And let me just see something here. Uh, okay. So here's an example. I'm going to, I've, I know I've talked to you about this before, but I'm okay. going to show it again. If you don't want a full TMS and you're trying to get technology and, and so forth, I'm just going to change here, here. Yeah. This one should be okay. Uh, share here. This will be kind of like the, I'll try to keep it at, this is my last sharing for you here. So here we go. Again, that this would be a whole another topic, but I remember I've talked to you about Trello. Remember, I've I've talked about Trello. So Trello is there's all kinds of different ones out there, but Trello essentially is it's it's a it's it's nothing to do with trucking. It's not. It's absolutely nothing to do with trucking. It is a imagine a whiteboard with stickies. Mm -hmm. So you got columns, topics like here's freight broker training, topics to discuss, done to read to read archived, you can have, you can, it starts out as a blank. Usually the way they teach it is to do, doing, done. This is like a tool board. So when you, you come in here, email templates, you can, and then what happens is once you open it, so oh, I got to do it on my board here. So if I open up this card, amazing sales statistics. So there's, there's, you know, so here's a, within it, I added a link to something talking about, again, so you always make at least six call attempts, right? Your chances of making contact increases to 90%. Best days of the week, best times of the day, you know, for certain ones. And 50% of sales go to the first salesperson to make contact. So it's just, but the idea is that I'm just showing that the, you like, you, you take a basic card. And you and create they, these cards. Yeah. You create the cards and then yeah. you, and then you, from there, Basically, you, I can add, I can add, like if I add a card resources, so DIY semi, right? So I can create that little simple thing. I can put a due date. So I want this due, say Tuesday at 8 a.m. This due on the day of, okay? So I can come in here and take some notes, right? And, uh, um, Yeah, so see how I use this? That's I made a video about this text expander. Yeah. So it's one of my videos. There's two tools, text blaze and text text expander. But look at this. So on my quotes, I just go dot opp and see how it automatically filled in. Let me know okay. if you have any questions. Thank you for the opportunity to quote this shipment. Pretty simple.
right? So text expander helps you save time typing. If you have repetitive things, so I can add notes, like I could put, you know, I can put bullet list, I can say topic one, two, and three. And if I put this, uh, you know, uh, key topics, so you'll see when I save it, all of a sudden, you know, you can see the note. Now I can put here, if you and I are on the same board, you can, sh you can have the same people, but I can make comments like uh, spoke with DIY about going live Sunday, March 12th, okay? And there it is. So it shows me the comment. Now, if I can put it to different people, like I can go at symbol and I add the person that's connected on the board. I can add Google Drive accounts. I can click on checklist. So to do, I can call it task one, oops, task one, two, three. And then we got the dates. I got the members so I can assign it to myself or not. So I can assign it to myself just by clicking the space bar, I can make this a template, I can put, you know, attachments, I can copy a Google link, I can put anything in here, I can say www.kanita.com. I can rename it, but I'll just keep it at that and attach. And so watch this will what this will do is when I click on it, it'll open up in their the Kanita web page. So now when I close this card, many things happen. I can see that there's a due date coming up. There's three to-do tasks. There's one comment and one attachment. And if I want to, I can add labels. So like call this one, say, uh, urgent. Okay. I'll just edit it and I'll say this is urgent. Okay. And then save. So, okay. So this is urgent. So now when I start my day, I can either come in on here and come in here and I can say, uh, oh, sorry, go back here. I want to view, uh, where is it here? Do, do, do. Oh, no, that's why, wrong button, sorry, wrong button. I click on here and I can go filter, so filter. So overdue, cards assigned to me, I can look at labels, so anything urgent. So we'll see what that does. I label everything else goes away, fil filters it out. So what this board's about, let's just go over here. So you can make this as um, to do, doing, <clears throat> done. You could make it like a task manager, like doing or to do. Say, okay, you're like this week, I need to buy tires, <clears throat> renew insurance. Right? And you can put due dates and so forth. And then as so, you're doing it. So you, essentially, it's a very, very detailed online calendar. Task well, manager. task manager, it's project manager, but you can keep it simple like this, where it's just simple things. Renew insurance. Okay, I need to do that. So when I'm doing it, okay, I'm going to do that. And if you can assign it to the day that you want to do that, you can keep it like no dates, nothing, just simple. You can say call broker A, right? So you, okay, I'm going to call them. And then when I call them, so I'm calling them and, uh, you know, uh, call John. Um, he's away until March 20th. Okay. So now, because I know he's, he's gone away, I'm going to say, well, he's gone to the 20th. He's probably just come back. I'll give him to the 21st. So now I have it scheduled. I will follow up with him on the 21st. Mm. So, but then I can also turn this into resources so we can say tire shops so you have five owner operators right tow truck companies fuel cards this is a way that you could list or repair shops like throughout the country every time that your driver stops if there's this dealer this dealer you got the name of the shop in this town and you can actually put location Right? You can search it and you can map them out. Like there's, there's a lot you can do, but the idea is all this is, it's a way for you to start getting yourself organized. And here's the other benefit. I can forward like on the board, you can save it as a, as an address, but I can email. So I can actually take an email, forward it in here. It becomes a card. And then I can use that as a tool to help me keep track of things to do. So Again, I won't get into the full fullness about it, but the idea is when you're taking notes, like say you had a claim, 
If you like, I use this as my load. I, this is how it starts for me. I have a, like, if I was to go, come in here <clears throat> and I, I can create a new board and I'll see if I can, let me see if you will let me, uh, I don't want to do this one. Yeah. So if I, I can create a board and I have it like quotes to do doing l loads to book uh, in transit. So the, the idea is when I create it, when a customer sends me an email that I have to do some quotes, I then take you know, snapshots of the maps I've created, things I've used to cal calculate, and I put it all in here as comments when I talk to carriers, right? Like if I, if this was a quote, <clears throat> and I went, either I'm going to look at the mileage, I can put notes about the mileage, like I can link it, I can put the link showing it here. Like if I went to Google Maps and I put it in, I can just copy that link, attach it in here, and I can say, uh, here's the link, and then put the comment, and then if, say, if I go carriers, um, so if I go carriers, March, March 12th. And if I spoke to someone, I can just say, uh, carrier one, I put their name information, carrier two, etc. And see how it, by, I, there's some things I do to make that big, but the idea is that I've got all my information or if I did a plan, you know, plan to pay truck and I put notes about how I'm going to pay the truck. And it, it basically it's instead of having stickies, I have uh, the stickies in the whiteboard. That's it. So it's wow. it's just it's a tool. Again, it's it's a whole nother course in itself. But just saying, if you think outside the world of trucking, there's tools mm -hmm. outside of trucking that can help you with your trucking business. Absolutely, man. And you so, gave us a lot of them today. So I think that's. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure we can go more, but I think we should probably call yeah. it there because yeah, we're no, we're, I... we're overwhelming probably everyone, and they're probably that boredom factor is scaled through the roof. So. No, I, man, really appreciate your time. I'm sure everybody here does. One, one question that I, that I wanted to throw at you here because, uh, you know, uh, T Hill, thanks for coming in, buddy. Says, do you think drivers targeting a certain broker to boycott is good for the industry? Um, I, I myself don't, I think it's a bad look. Um, I think that, but I guess there's two ways to look somebody, at it. Don't do business with them. That's right. But, but I guess if there's legitimate concerns on a broker's yeah. actions what it can do and i'll use i think it's a uh, mr best's terminology it's a checkup from the neck up okay so when you hear just like you guys as carriers let's say you found out some carrier in your own state you saw on, on freight waves or wherever truck news anywhere else someone a carrier was caught with elds violations mm-hmm would, does that, and especially if it's close to home and you've got five drivers yourself, would you not poke your eye up a little bit more just to say, hmm, maybe I haven't been paying attention to that too much. I should look at that a little closer. So I'm not an expert to say it, but if a certain broker, doesn't matter big or small, and many carriers have the same concern and they're seeing that they're truly in because they have maybe a big market share of the industry and they're doing certain actions, then maybe, but there's procedures for that. But I think that maybe, yeah, I mean, it's a right to do that, but how you approach it and stuff. But yeah, if it's going to fix the help fix the industry so that others, are, if a broker is truly doing something bad, maybe there's pros and cons. I don't know. Yeah. But again, yeah, that's, up, right. to the, it, it that's up to the broker the and how yeah. the, again, the way I look at it is it's kind of like if you are an employee and you had a bad experience with with your work your manager did something that you felt was inappropriate or said something inappropriate or whatever and your first reaction was to go on social media and saying at work today my manager told me the following and someone else on that facebook rant knows who you are knows where you work clips that and forwards it to the management of that company and they never knew any of this occurred mm -hmm. so the Without the, the, if you're taking the time to make a public protest on these brokers, I'd be interested to see what, how many emails and letters have you sent to the broker addressing these issues, and what's been their response to, to try to resolve it before resorting to that. I mean, right? Not saying that making it public's wrong, right. but it's kind of like we always, especially in business, we should give the, at least a chance to 
put the information out of the concerns to the party. No different than if you had a bad experience at a restaurant. I think it's only fair because I know it's it's so easy in the world of 2023 where you can take an Instagram photo or Facebook photo and bash them. So you have two ways you can do it. You could bash them or one, you can leave a bad Google review. That's a public way of polite public way of doing it versus just going on social media. You go to their actual Google review, right? If you all of a sudden someone found your company and left a, a one star, well, if you look at other Google reviews out there, you'll see good companies will actually have a reply explaining, hey, you know what? We did find a problem with that employee and it wasn't the first occasion. So that employee is no longer employed here. We truly apologize for this circumstance. And it was a situation that we were not aware of, but due to the thanks of yourself and a few other customers, we found out that this issue was going on and that person is no longer employed here because of that. Mm -hmm. So I just think that if you're, that's my perspective. I'm not saying it because I'm not an expert. I don't own a brokerage, so I can't speak to that. But I would just say, if I'm running a business and someone wants to bash my business, give me a chance to yeah. share to identify what's going on because maybe i didn't know maybe i hired a manager in a position and they uh, they yeah. if, overstepped their boundaries and i was if it was you how would you want somebody to handle it would you want them to would you want to try to work it out with them first or would you now well, what if would you, you, right if these if all these carriers that are going against this brokerage have letters with the emails they printed out like five emails where they've sent on different layouts with all the details and no responses now, the other thing too, uh, one tool that I quite like is not saying they, they're the best or the worst, but the one tool they have that's nice is on truck stop, report a carrier, report a broker. Have you ever you seen that feature? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you know how that how it works for those that don't know. If you report, you click on the, if you're on truckstop.com and you click report a broker, basically you submit the details. Truck stop does not evaluate. They just take that data report it to the party that you're complaining about their letter will say you have seven days to provide your side of the story mm -hmm. after if you if you do respond to that they look at the start at the story they see the rebuttal and if they felt that it's been resolved you'll get an email from truck stop saying well the carrier re replied with the following this the response here sh leads us to believe that the situation has been resolved or if they found that what you're saying as a broker or the carrier complaining to the broker and the broker responds and it's kind of gray, not quite resolved and both parties have a stance. Then what they do is when you click on that carrier or that broker, you'll see that you'll see they'll post both the complaint and the response. And if the rebro if you, if you make a complaint to the broker and the broker doesn't respond in seven days, then they just post the response that the complaint and show no response from party. So then, right. When you see that, because I've leveraged that, to be honest with you, I have leveraged that to my advantage in a sense, like say I see this carrier and they call me up or I call them and I see that there was a complaint. I call them on it. I say, I see there's three complaints about this thing. Yeah, we had a bad dispatcher. He's no longer there. So I'll say, okay, here's what I'll do then. If you, if I book this load with you, you show me what you're capable of executing. Do good communication, all that stuff that we talk about. And if you prove that you actually are honest, I will put a review to help you show that. And I will put, hey, I spoke to John, the owner, and he was upfront that there was an issue. They've resolved it. I gave him a chance. He proved I had a load that went from you know this state to that state. I don't have to give the details. And he's shown that they've made the appropriate changes. So they, I was positive on, I was pleased with their service. So it's a give and take to help. Because yeah. if you have a bad situation happen, it could happen. All of a sudden, you went on vacation. Your drivers messed up some stuff, and it things went sideways. Well, you gotta, you know, it's it's business, and you gotta help help each other. Sometimes, you you know, you have a moment that you fall off on your slip. You gotta rebuild yourself back up. So it's, I always yeah. think about it, things. That, there's levels. There's levels to it. I mean, is it a broker that you know you found out you've done ten loads for them, and they're just they're not they have no intention of ever paying you, and you found out they're they're not paying anybody, and they're gonna make off to the Cayman Islands with the money. Well, then, yeah, right away, you probably go big with it and try and tell everybody. Yep. Is it a case of, you know, you've been not gotten your updated rate confirmation yeah. for your exactly. detention? Well, that's an internal thing. It's and those are the red flags. Level. Like when you say, let's say a broker calls you up 
hey, I see you on, on D, I found you on DAT or something like that or whatever. And they want to, they don't even know you, you don't know them. And they want to try to offer you 20 loads. Be suspicious. And the classic one is mulch. I used to get, I haven't had it for years, but years ago, I used to get in the spring mulch. These guys would come in and have, all of a sudden, randomly, some guy would call me out of the blue. He's a shipper, not even a, car a broker, a carrier. And they're trying to offer me 20 loads. So you're like, okay. And then he's trying to pay you the, like he, the loads are pretty cheap, which mulch often is. But then you found out after investigating that this guy is not credit worthy and he's booked, he's, his plan is to book 20, 30, 40 loads and then not pay that he's booking with carriers, brokers, and he has no intention. So the, the summary is, is that you have to try before you buy. If you are planning to work with your brokers or carriers, because again, hey, if you build, a, if you're factoring your loads today and you start building a relationship with a broker, as you build that relationship, you can start to say, okay, let me just see here. I'm paying my factoring fee, but what kind of terms do they have? What's the credit worthiness? Because maybe you could show them, hey, I'm going to help. I'm going to, you know, I'll bill you guys in 30 days now because I feel you, I trust you. I'm going to, you're my one fee broker. I'll, you know, however that works, but you're, 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 you might change your business model for that one shipper, that one broker. So again, that just helps you evolve. But I mean, we can go on and on and on, but hopefully right. there's some points here that people will get something out of it, but it's not about broker bashing, carrier bashing. It's about how do we level ourselves up to the next level? And those are some of the tools that we discussed today that hopefully can help you take your carrier or brokerage or whatever you're doing to the next level. Excellent. Excellent. Is there anything you want to say or tell about, talk about to promote yourself, your channel, uh, where, where people can watch you and find you? Well, basically you've been flashing it across the screen. So I think it's pretty self-evident, <laughs> but, and I appreciate that. The problem is, is that I do apologize that I'm, I don't always have the time. Um, right. I guess the only thing would be is if, if anyone has ideas of something that they want to see, I'll do the best I can to put it together. Cause I will be honest, just like anything else, getting into the YouTube you know, world is hard. Um, because of the fact that I'm not a person where I have a truck and I'm just going to put my camera on and show my journey. Cause a lot of people like that, right? There's a lot of people that do like watching drivers, you know, living the life of that driver vicariously through their camera, watching them mm -hmm. go through their, you know, cause some drivers are great. They share, they show themselves strapping their loads or loading, talking about, Hey, I would go here. And they're not, they're not nothing negative. They're just sharing their journey and they do it in a positive way. And a lot of people like that. Um, but for myself being that I'm not gonna, you know, I'm just doing like knowledge stuff. I have to be, do the edited videos, which right. it takes, takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time to put together and I try to make it so that, uh, I don't want them to be super long. Cause I think when they're long, you lose. So I got to try to keep them under that 10 minutes and taking a topic that, so if someone has a certain topic they want, they can leave comments and I'll do my best to be there. Uh, I don't expect myself to be a big YouTube guru at, at anything at all. Um, Again, this is only my perspective as an agent sharing what I've oh, I can share. This That's, this world and YouTube and community needs more of people like you. So I'm very happy to promote this and uh, thank you very much. And congratulations to your polar plunge yesterday. Oh, thank you. I'm uh, I'm feeling good today. I'm just I feel like somebody sucked the life out of me. Like I'm I'm just so physically exhausted today well Other also that, i'm feeling pretty good is your like today we sprung ahead in my province so we lose we lost an hour so if you were the same way it's strange but that one hour does make a difference yeah it does it does but i didn't set an alarm i just slept right till i woke up this morning no i was up early i was up six o'clock but <laughs> i had to do i had to do an early morning workout so i had to plan yeah. myself accordingly so excellent well keep in touch we'll do this again can you hang on for just a minute yep. after we're done here yep all right. Thanks, All right. everybody, for coming in. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, check out CDN Freight Brokers channel, and uh, hit them with all kinds of questions and encouragement. We'll talk to you later.